and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hayes, Lauren, and RJ, The Frangie Show, starts now on 1010XL 92.5 FM. Hey, welcome in. Glad you're along for the ride on a Thursday installment of a program. My goodness, what a fantastic, fantastic day it was today. Gorgeous, gorgeous weather. And I got to tell you, one of the uh, one of the most beautiful weather days I think we've had since we've been doing this tournament. What a magnificent day today, don't you guys think? How good was that? Unbelievable day and uh, made all the better by getting a chance to see the Golden Bear, Jack Nicholas today. What a wonderful surprise. Lee Smith obviously teased it yesterday when he joined us, but uh, unbelievable to get to see Jack Nicholas uh, greeting the 140 group. Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, and Ricky Fowler uh, is, is we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this great tournament with one of its greatest champions and, and arguably the greatest player to ever play the game. So, I, as you guys know, Jack Nicholas was my dad's all-time favorite player by a mile. Uh, the 86 Masters is still one of the coolest sports events uh, that I got to witness. Uh, I, I mean, I wasn't there, but witness is a, is a young fan seeing the reaction that my dad had to it. Um, and it's been a while since I've seen Jack Nicholas. I've, I've seen him out here before. He used to do a, uh, press conferences out here. So, uh, I, you know, but it's, it's been probably a good 15 years or so since I've uh, – had a chance to, to see Jack. And so just so honored to be in his presence. Uh, just a, a remarkable gentleman and ambassador for the world of sports and certainly this great sport. And so, uh, I mean, it, the, the day doesn't get any better than that. So seeing Nicholas, uh, the gorgeous weather and, and a lot of great shots today on the course. Did you text your dad any pictures? I did, absolutely. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. And that made his day, I'm absolutely. sure, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Frank and I were standing kind of up on the hill overlooking and just – yeah, getting to see him was like a goosebump kind of moment. Like, I can't believe he – I had not seen him in person before, and so getting to see him was great. He's 85, but he looks like he could go out here and uh, and maybe putt a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, it's been such a great day, and, and I think the sentiment, Frank, from everyone that's out here is we have one of the most beautiful golf courses on the planet. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. And, I, and I'll say this, too, for for me – and, and you, we all have this recency bias. We're married to whatever is today. But I, I will tell you, I can't remember a better day weather-wise. Now, that, that doesn't mean there hasn't been 50 others just like this. But didn't it feel that way to you guys? Uh, it felt, I mean, the sun never went away. It was never steaming hot. It wasn't cool. Yeah, that's the be- beautiful part about March, even though I know a lot of people loved May. It, May is hot. Yeah, the, uh, and, and, I, and I'm telling you, I, I thought for me, it was man. I thought it was just a fantastic day. I will tell you. So you, you came up with an idea, Lauren, the, the other day, to let's all just pick three golfers. Yes. And I said, okay, I hadn't really thought much about it. <laughs> We're all going to pick Scheffler. Yep. We're all going. But I had this stupid gut that no matter how much money or how much barbecue Rory McIlroy has cost us over the years, mm-hmm. he's cost us a lot of barbecue. Is that a fair? Is that a, he's cost us a lot of barbecue? For sure. I had a hunch he'd play pretty well. I, I You know, he's still, a, hey, he's still a great player. Oh, yeah. And I had I had just this hunch. And uh, Lauren said, when you picked Rory, I thought you were the dumbest guy in town. I thought I might have been the dumbest guy in town. <laughs> Wasn't it great to see Rory get off to a great start? Absolutely. I mean, he was six under through his first eight, uh, open on the, the back nine. I got the, the tee shot in the drink on 18, but was able to get a, a very reasonable bogey out of it. He, he, his uh, second was incredible. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously a great round for Rory McIlroy. Uh, and, again, a player like that, it's it's normally that just, just kind of get in. It, you know, it, it's somewhere two, three under. Uh, put yourself in good position. Well, he's done way more than that. So uh, it, it's it's a fun leaderboard, I mean, to see uh, Xander Schauffele up there. Uh, he is a player that is searching for that elusive signature win. This would certainly qualify for that. So uh, it's a great early start. It's obviously – uh, very favorable in terms of the conditions. I thought this was mm-hmm. hilarious. So, Scheffler, Justin Thomas, and Ricky Fowler tee off at 140. They were teeing off at T97. Right. 
uh, because that's how easy the course is playing right, right. now. So uh, uh, that's I don't know that I've ever seen that. <laughs> right. Somebody right. teeing off to start their round, and they're T97 <laughs> because no one's over par. So uh, it's uh, it, it'll be fun to see if that continues. And uh, what, if anything, the, the tour decides to do to try to, to beef up the stadium course. But honestly, there really isn't a ton that, that they can do. And, and frankly, who cares? As long as there's drama at the end, mm -hmm. I don't, I, t to me, it doesn't matter whether it's 21 under or 8 under. You just hope that, you know, it's, it's really competitive all the way through all 72 holes. And hopefully that's what we get. Yeah, it'll be, it's going to be an awful lot of fun to watch. I think we're in a good place. And, and, and listen, this is um, – this is a it's a time to this tournament this week is a time to celebrate in Jacksonville. It always is. This is always celebration time in Jacksonville. No matter what the weather is, no matter what else has gone on, no matter what else has happened, when this week gets here, we celebrate. We celebrate when this week gets here and this is a time to celebrate and it's a it's a time to celebrate because this is our event. I've said this many many times before. This is our event. This isn't anybody else's event. This is Orlando. Orlando has Disney, and Miami has South Beach, and Tampa has this, and Atlanta has that. But we have the players. Regardless of how you feel about golf, regardless of how you feel about other things in the world of sports, this one's ours, and it's only ours. And, uh, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud. The three of us have a kind of a unique perspective because we're the three people that are born and raised here. You know, there's not a lot of people born and raised in this city, uh, even at our radio station, even in the local media. You know, mm -hmm. you, you go local, local, not just our radio station, local media wide, there's not that many folks that are born and raised here. We are. And, uh, and it was, it's, it's an amazing thing. So I, was, I got all caught up in it. Like you, uh, Hayes, my dad was also a really big Nicholas fan. My dad was United's first. Nicholas second, Koufax third, because that generation, you know, I, thought, I saw Tom Coughlin. Tom was out there watching him, and I was telling Tom about my dad, like your dad, Hayes, being a big Nicholas fan, and uh, and Tom said, frankly, our generation, everybody was, you know. So Tom's, so I'm 65. Tom is 78, 79, somewhere thereabouts, some somewhere. I, I think he, I think he's, yeah, he's late 70s. So, so his generation. If I'm a little kid when Nicholas is playing, Nicholas, you weren't around yet, Hayes, when Nicholas is in his prime. You're. Um, Tom had to be, you know, a seventy-seven. He had a teenage, you know, teenager somewhere mm -hmm. there about. So, so watching Jack Nicholas, like you just said, watching Jack Nicholas walk out there and being on that first tee when the great Jack Nicholas walked out there was one of the cool. I mean, it was a really cool moment. Well, you can't overstate it. And the and the crowd was so sensational. Yeah. I mean, you heard so much. Thank you, Jack, and uh, and obviously there was there was a a, a ton of fans out there. Uh, so when Scheffler and JT and Fowler hit their tee, sh tee shots, certainly, you know, a good portion of that crowd went to go follow them. But I was really surprised how many fans stayed back because Jack still at that point did his interview with uh, Roger Maltby. Then he came and, and posed with the championship trophy and took time to find, you know, where he is inscribed on that beautiful championship trophy and uh, posed with it. And, I mean, just to – it, it just it, it warms my heart that obviously he gets the reverence that golf fans still have for him. And I think that's just so remarkable and cool about this sport is that you can uh, you can have somebody, a legend like this, still be able to soak up the appreciation uh, from uh, his legion of fans. And so I, I thought it was I thought the fans were sensational it added to my enjoyment of it yeah same that there were so many people that wanted to soak up every minute of of nicholas being out there and didn't you guys because we all three were there didn't you get the sense that there was a i don't know there was a charm a respectful gentlemanly charm with the way he handled it absolutely didn't it feel that way it's not like they did it's not like there was a big speaker where you could hear him talk it's not he wasn't there to do that he wasn't there to hit a first shot like it's Augusta. He was there just to, to have that respectful, gentlemanly presence, that gentle smile. Uh, he was out there in his sweater because we all know Jack from the days of his sweater. It was just uh, – it was a pristine moment, Lauren. I, I thought it was a – I thought it was a – I thought it was a – the, the longer I've been in sports, the longer I get nostalgic and think about all the years of watching it and my dad and our dads and – yeah, it was a really good moment. 
It sure was. I took a video of, of Scheffler's swing on that first tee, and I put, no pressure, Scotty. You just have yeah. Jack right behind yeah. you watching. But, yeah, I mean, I think, I think to Hayes' point, everybody that was there – I think most of us probably had chill bumps, right? Yeah, like, yeah. here's the great Jack Nicholas, and, and yes, he's respecting our event because yeah. it's the 50th anniversary, and that's really cool. Yeah, so it was cool. So, all right, today, we're going to talk all about the golf day one, what stood out, what didn't. Hayes told you really the storyline. Everybody went low. Nobody went high. I mean, it was more nobody going high than everybody going low, wasn't it, Hayes? I think that's the point you made. I think you're right about that. We'll talk about that. Lee There's Smith. pressure on this afternoon group. Yeah, now. yeah, I mean, there look, is. Yes. You that's right. That's right. I mean, that's you right. can't come in with a 72-73 today. Yeah. Normally, that'd be fine. Right. I, I mean, you could you still come back and win it? Yeah, but you would need three outstanding days. And you can't go back. And you can't have a bad day. Can't have a bad day. Yeah, yeah. Right, But even so. even a decent day, right, that's you're right. going to be really in a hole. That's the pressure that the morning group has put yeah, on this right. afternoon group. Yeah, so we'll certainly talk about that today. Lee Smith joins us in about 20 minutes uh, to give us his take, or 30 minutes or so, to give us his take of the players the first day. Uh, some Jaguars. Uh, Devin DuVernay, Gabe Davis met the media today. You'll hear some of their comments. There was a press conference, and we've got sound from that, so we'll play that for you coming up today on the program. We'll talk about NFL free agency. Uh, day two officially, day four really. Uh, any new news, any expectations, we'll certainly talk about that. College basketball tonight, the Gators back on the hardwood in what I think is an important run for them. I, I think it, I think it'll matter, and we'll certainly talk about that coming up today uh, as well. Florida State eliminated in the ACC tournament. They won yesterday, then ran into that really good North Carolina team today, so they are out. So we'll talk a little college basketball. We'll talk a little bit about spring football. We'll get to free agency, but it's mostly golf today. We're proud to be out here. We're glad we're out here. It's a Stanley Pools Thursday. It's an old rock Thursday. A lot to do. Glad you're with us. Frangie and Carline Brooks and R.J. Saunders. This is 1010XL and 92.5 FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. Your home for Florida Gators basketball is 1010XL. The Gators step into the SEC tournament as the sixth seed against the Bulldogs. Florida, Georgia, tonight at 930 on 1010 AM. Hey, it's Hicken with 1010XL. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is currently hiring for police, corrections, 911 dispatchers, and various civilian jobs. And for a limited time, JSO offering a hiring incentive up to $10,000 for police and corrections applicants. Details available at joinjso.com. Start your journey as a law enforcement professional, helping us drive down crime and foster positive relationships with citizens. If you're ready to be part of the solution, apply now. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is an equal opportunity, equal access employer. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, The Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. Frank Frangie here. It's Chevy truck season at Nimnik Chevrolet. There's no better time to do what you do best in a Chevy Silverado. At Nimnik Chevrolet, you can save up to $10,000 off a new Silverado. Plus, well-qualified buyers can get rates as low as 0.9% financing on all new Silverado 1500 models. Nimnik has the largest inventory on the ground and outstanding cash incentives, and of course, that best price guarantee. Head to Nimnik today. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Prosser here for Lifetime Enclosures and Lifetime Flooring. With the weather starting to turn for the better, look ahead. Get that backyard ready for spring with a new screened-in enclosure. Maximize the space you have and make it great with lifetime enclosures and lifetime flooring. They truly are best in the business. If you have the space and the idea, give them a call today. Lifetime enclosures and lifetime flooring. Showroom just off Phillips Highway. Tell them Prosser sent you. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Track the offseason with Tire Outlet and 1010XL. With the debut appearance of two new players. Free agency coverage on 1010XL is brought to you by Superior Fence and Rail and Roland Leash Plumbing. Looking for the perfect Saturday plans? Head over to Players Grill, where Saturdays are all about pizza and pints. Dive into a delicious pizza paired with your choice of Miller Lite or Yingling Draft Beer for just $12.99. Pizza, pints, and a great time. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free. No credit cards, no car loans, no personal loans. Hey, it's Prosser here, 
and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Monaghan Jewelers is the place for GIA certified diamonds and fine jewelry since 1977. It's TPC week and the ladies deserve some TPC bling, so Monaghan Jewelers is celebrating with five-year interest-free financing on all purchases. Buy one carat diamond studs for as low as $39 a month. Get a $9,000 engagement ring for $150 a month. Whatever the purchase, get five years interest-free. We're your local family jeweler, so support us and get the best deals on the greatest selection of fine jewelry, Monaghan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach. The Players' Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. Taylor Dahl here continuing on this afternoon with your Players' Championship updates. This update is brought to you by Coastal Equipment and Monahan Jewelers. Taking a look at some of the later tee times that went off this afternoon. Corey Connors with a strong start to his day with two birdies, an eagle and par on his first four holes of the day, putting him at four under. Some big names in these afternoon pairings. Reigning champ Scotty Scheffler sits at two under through five in his group. Justin Thomas also two under and former champion Ricky Fowler at one over. Another solid grouping, Tony Finau at three under through his first four four holes starting the day strong along with Shane Lowry and Will Zalatoris both even so far today in play. The top of the leaderboard at the moment all in the clubhouse including both Xander Schauffele and Roy McIlroy who sit at seven under. Schauffele carded a bogey free 65 in his first round. His first career bogey free score in 15 rounds at the players while Rory's 65 was his third score of 65 or better at the players championship tying three others for most since the tournament moved to TPC Sawgrass. Sitting solo behind them is Nick Taylor who finished with four birdies on the back to finish off at six under followed by a group of guys all sitting at five under. Tom Hoagie, Jason Day, Ludwig Aberg in his debut at the Players. They are all done for the day also. And another name to keep an eye on, Max Homa, three under through six holes today so far. Another live Players Championship update coming for you in about 20 minutes right here on 1010XL. It's Kubota Orange Days, your golden chance to score a deal that will make your neighbors green with envy. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. And get the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. Coastal Equipment on New Kings Road and in McClenny. Coastal Equipment. 1010XL is presented by Barra and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's an old rock Thursday. Music the way it should be, or at least used to be, on the Frangie Show. My thinking was this. If you're going to go to one of the best golf tournaments in the world... Play one of the best bands in the world. Agree? Totally. Disagree? Totally. Love it. We could do Fleetwood Mac every month. Every right? month. Yeah, we could. Yeah, <laughs> we could. We could do it every week. We but could do it every week. So, uh, yeah. Fleetwood Mac today on Old Rock Thursday. I don't think you can ever go wrong. It's been a while. It has been a while for Fleetwood Mac. So, Fleetwood Mac today on Old Rock Thursday. Like Jack Nicholas, Fleetwood Mac, and the players. Is that a good day? Well, how's that day? <laughs> how, how, how's that day? Okay. So, there you go. That was kind of the thinking. Uh, uh, Hayes, we were all out here today. I know you weren't there. Mia went down there, I think, but we weren't here. And so she'll still have some thoughts from being at the presser. But we all heard the comments. Um, any in initial impressions from the opening day presser from some of the new Jags? Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's, it is disappointing that 
free agency falls <laughs> on the same week as the players, and, and obviously you can't be in two places at once. So would have loved to have been there. But uh, I, I just think, to be honest, I, I think it's just kind of standard fare. I didn't see anything yeah. on Twitter that, that jumped out to me one way or another. I mean, obviously these guys are going to be excited. They should be excited. Uh, um, you know, and, and so uh, I'm excited about Gabe Davis. I, I do think that that's uh, – uh, I never really looked – at the receiver group because I thought it was Ridley or bust. Uh, and so I never really paid a lot of attention to, to going through that position. But, but since they have brought in Gabe Davis and looking at what he's done, that's a, that's a sneaky upside signing. I think, I mean, now granted he was with Buffalo. He was with a great quarterback and certainly Stefan Diggs, fantastic receiver. And, and Buffalo feels like obviously that he underachieved a bit. But, uh, I mean, I look at the 27 touchdowns and, and, and how young this guy is. I mean, there's probably players, receivers in this draft that are about his age. Uh, I mean, for him to be 24, I think this will be his year 25 season. I, I mean, that is – you're paying for years 25, 26, 27 for a guy that's been this explosive. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I mean, I, I think Savage is a good move. Obviously, Morris didn't – he already met with us, so he wasn't in this group. Um, you know, Darby, I think, is a, is a good, you know, rotation, like depth piece there. Um, Duvernay obviously could be the difference in one or two games, which could be the difference in a division title. So that's an important signing. But, uh, but for me, the, Gabe Davis is the guy that I'm going to be really focusing in on when we get a chance to see these guys run around out there. All right, let's hear from uh, Gabe Davis, the uh, former Buffalo Bill. Talk today about a number of things, including his decision to sign with the Jags. Like I was at – UCF, watching my brother, um, and I mean, watching the whole team. And Gus actually wanted me to talk to the receivers. He's like, hey, you know, 20 minutes, come talk to the receivers real quick. And I'm like, I got to go. I got I got phone calls I'm about to be on. I went home, showered, went to. I got a gym down there in Orlando that, um, that I run. So I was sitting in the conference room there. And as soon as 12 o'clock hit, it all just started going and going. And as soon as I heard Jacksonville, I was like, thank God they called. <laughs> I was like, thank God. Um, I wanted to come back to Florida. I wanted to be around, you know, guys that I knew, you know, coach that I loved, and you know, the team's great. Um, shoot, we could never, we could never beat them. You know what I mean? So came here, and you know, soon as soon as they sent it in, you know, negotiations win, and then boom, I was like, yeah, I'm a Jaguar, man. Pretty easy decision. Great stuff, and uh, one of the coaches he loves so much is Chad Hall, his wide receivers coach in Buffalo, who is now here. He talked about uh, playing or working alongside Chad Hall. And, of course, Doug Peterson. Chad's like family. Um, was with him for three years in Buffalo. Uh, again, family first. And no matter if I was here or somewhere else, I still talk to Chad, you know, on the regular. So he's definitely a dear dear friend of mine. Um, and I was also able to have some friends that's been through here um, and also play here, Christian Kirk. And I know Zay Jones. And I've talked to uh, Trevor before. Um, but being able to get some real insight on, you know, how this place is run on Doug and how this is a great place to be. One of my buddies, Jacob Harris, who I played at UCF with, was here for a short while, and um, he gave me some real good insight on, you know, Jacksonville is the place to be, and you'll be happy here. So I had some good, uh, had some good people to tell me some good things. So it made, made my decision a lot easier. What's it like having Mitch Morris come down here and join the team with you? Yeah, I mean, that's as soon as I saw him sign, I was like, yeah, it's destined to be. You know what I mean? Mitch is my guy, um, a vet guy who I trust, great player, great leader. Great teammate, and you know he's he's helped me a lot in this league, and I'm so happy to be coming to a new place, but still with a lot of familiar faces. So it makes makes this process a lot easier. Gabe, we know what you think of the team. What do you bring to the Jaguars? I I, I feel like I can do it all. You know, I've, I I did so much when I was at Buffalo, whether if it was you know catching deep balls or you know lead blocking through the C gap. I mean, I feel like I'm I'm very versatile and can. You know, play any type of game that enemy play, whichever week, uh, any any other week. You know, so that I feel like that's what I bring. I was a 24-year-old captain at Buffalo. Um, I feel like I, I got good leadership skills, and um, I was voted back-to-back -back hardest worker there as well. Uh, that's what I try to, to to prove to my teammates that they can trust me because they see the sacrifice that I put in um, for my team, and they see that you know I love this game and I don't take it for granted because it's brought me so much. So. I try to show the guys that, you know, when times are tough, they can they, they can depend on me. The comments of Gabe Davis, uh, Lauren, I, he's a guy I already think I like him. This guy is convicted. 
Uh, he knows what he wants. He was very clear. Love listening to him. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, Frank. Obviously, here in Jacksonville, there's so much disappointment the way the season ended. But remember when the Jaguars faced the Bills in London, both Mitch Morse and Gabe Davis remember that the Jaguars took it to the Bills and have been successful against that franchise So in recent years. So I think from their perspective, they're coming to a winning organization, uh, not feeling all the disappointment that certainly we feel. But, yeah, I think Gabe Davis is going to be great for Trevor Lawrence. And we'll see, you know, Hayes, who else potentially wide receiver-wise could land here. Yeah, receiver is an interesting need. Some, some fans believe it's now the number one need. I don't know that I'm there with that. I mean, I, I think, again, it's just – it's it's it depends on how you view the offense. I mean, they, they certainly don't have – if it's Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, Zay Jones, of those receivers, they don't have a guy that I think anybody would say is a top 20 receiver in the NFL. But I think Christian Kirk is, is a playmaker and he's reliable. I think Zay Jones is a playmaker and he's reliable. Uh, and I think Gabe Davis is going to fit in very well here from a scheme standpoint, uh, from a character standpoint, and from a skill standpoint. Uh, you then factor in Evan Ingram. You then factor in ETN. So I, I think they should take a receiver in this draft. It's deep. Uh, but to me, it could be that comp third. And, uh, and I think they have the luxury of waiting. I don't look at the receiver group as like I do the corner and say they need an immediate week one starter there now. I, I, I would like to see a receiver brought in with a, a, a fairly significant investment, but that's more about building the position because eventually you are going to get to a cap situation, particularly whenever they sign Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, where you're not going to really, really be able to rely on building your receiver group through free agency like they've done with Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis and Zay Jones. Eventually, those, those guys are going to have to be cultivated through the draft. And uh, so I look at a position that needs some help, but I don't think it needs like – and I have no problem with Brian Thomas or whoever mm -hmm. if a receiver falls. or I mean, if they take a receiver at 17, great. I'm never going to be upset by that. But I think they're in a position – I think the group is good enough – where they could wait and until that comp third, and I think there's going to be a really good player there if they wanted to go corner 17, interior defensive line, second round, something like that. Frank, I thought about this as soon as I woke up today. Calvin Ridley must be the happiest person alive that Josh Allen got franchise tagged because if he had signed the extension and gotten the deal, Calvin Ridley is under the franchise tag. He gets the $21.8 million. And the $50 million guaranteed that he ended up getting isn't there. The four-year, $92 million deal isn't there. It, crazy how one thing, obviously, the yeah. domino happens. And Calvin Ridley wakes up a much richer man than – and again, 21.8 yeah. is nothing to sneeze at. But now he has serious long-term What money. was his – And he wouldn't have gotten the 21.8 until September. That's right. the, and he would have the, only yeah. got it right. in 18-week right, right. increments. Exactly. Right. right. What is, what's the bonus? What bonus did he get? Uh, it's, what, 50 is guaranteed? Yeah, so, uh, so we didn't. I, do, I, don't, I that, bet you they handed him a check for, I would think, I, I don't have it in front of yeah, me. I so, would say fifteen to twenty-five million see, would see, be my guess. See, the diff, the real difference is, if he plays two years at, at uh, in Tennessee, gets his bonus plus his fifty, which is his two twenty-one million dollar years or twenty-four million dollar years. Well, then it doesn't matter if he plays after that. Right. This isn't about the four years. Right. This is about when, to Hayes's point, when he gets paid and how much you get up front. At the end of the day, the money he would have put in his pocket uh, two or three years there two, is not all that different. The money that's different is the money you get now. The, right. The, and the, what the, if he didn't have a great year yeah, this yeah, year? Yeah. That, yeah well, then I, his, his deal is completely well, different with wherever he landed next. Well, the Jags would have extended him. He, he was going to he was gonna get – hey, well, what do you, what's your guess the Jags off? Because they tried to match this. The, the word was they tried to match it. They just couldn't get close to work. what. What's your and we're guessing now, but sure. what's your guess? The number was ballpark. Probably, I don't know, eighteen million per. Yeah, I would say all of that. I, I would say, I would say, if he he wound up getting twenty three, twenty four, and if he wound up getting twenty three, and and the Jags tried to come close, yeah, I would guess they're in the twenty range. So at the end of the day. Let's say he played either place two years, forty. Let's say it's twenty. I'm guessing. Let's say it's forty versus forty-six. By the way, the six million dollars difference. 
after taxes, it's probably $3 million difference, but it's the money up front. It's the sure. guaranteed money that you know you're guaranteed that 50 to your point, Lauren, no matter what goes wrong. Right, and we don't yeah. know for sure that he was going to get extended. Yeah. He might have played on and the franchise and side. I, and I can also tell you this, talking to folks I've spoken with in Nashville, they knew they had to, they had to blow him out of the water to get him out of here. They, just like we thought, just like New England found out, well, I think New England might, might have had a better deal on the table than Jacksonville did, but he wasn't going. The Titans had to do a deal that had to amaze he and Mulligetta, or he, or he wasn't going. And, and so it wasn't just a – they couldn't do a deal that was just marginally better than what Jacksonville could do. They had to do a deal that he, – they, they had to do a whoa deal. They had to do a bad deal, they which had, is what they did. They, <laughs> they did I, I think, bad by deal. The way, I, see, I think – I feel like that's sour grapes if I say so, but I think that too. Yeah, I, mean, I think that too. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's a bad that, deal. I, mean, I think I, I think I think that too, and I and and I I, th- I think the same thing. I don't think it's a great deal, but they had to do a deal where he said, "Whoa, I want to stay in Jacksonville, but I can't pass that up." I mean, at some point, the liking Trevor and liking Doug and liking Christian and is all great, but I can't do that. So so, anyways, uh, I do want you to hear a couple comments from Devin Duvernay, the new uh, kick returner that is here, wide receiver as well. Uh, we asked him, uh, the media asked him, I should say, what did you know about Jacksonville before you came here? Uh, honestly, not much, but as far as what I have to offer, just explosiveness, you know, just excitement, you know, speed, physicality, and, you know, just excited to, you know, play my game and bring my game to Jacksonville. Everybody knows he's a good return guy, but has he talked to the Jags about how they'll utilize him other than just as a returner? Yeah, I mean, nothing like for sure yet, but was in the works of, you know, just having an opportunity get on the field, make plays, get the ball in my hands, and, you know, things of that nature. And obviously Jamal Agnew is the same type player, returner first and foremost, but could be used as a receiver. Uh, Duvernay was asked, did he have any conversations with Jamal about it? I haven't really talked to him a lot. Talked to him like like pregame and stuff when we played Jacksonville. But, uh, no, definitely great, great player. You watched him a lot, and, uh, you know, he, you know, he was great at what he did. Devin Duvernay, the brand-new kick returner. My guess is this. My guess is it'll be similar to Agnew Hayes. He's a kick returner. He's a punt returner. There will be some gadgety stuff you can use him on, a wide receiver screen every now and then, a reverse, a jet sweep here and there. But my guess is he's primarily a return guy. Yeah, absolutely, and he's one of the best at it. Um, You know, we'll see if if the kickoff ends up getting adjusted. Um, My guess is it won't. I'd like to see it get adjusted, but my guess is it won't. So I don't know how much he is going to help you there because I can't imagine a team is going to willingly kick him the ball. Uh, but on a punt, you know, they haven't figured that one out yet. So uh, that's still very much in the game. And if you're if you're an opposing head coach, uh, you've got to think long and hard about are we even going to try to kick to this guy? Are we going to try and angle it? Which sometimes can even lead to a poor kick. And, and the angle is too acute and you end up with a 22-yard net punt. Well, Duvernay doesn't get credit for that, but he's the reason it happened. Uh, And so that's the kind of impact, that hidden yardage that can be so vital in a three-point football game. That's the kind of impact Duvernay can have, even when he doesn't return the ball on punts, and certainly when he gets a chance to return the ball as a punt returner. He's one of the best in the world. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, Later on, you'll hear from Ronald Darby, a brand-new cornerback who's here. He met with the media today. And as we speak, Mac Jones is speaking with the media. You'll hear those comments as well. We have introduced you to Gabe Davis and Devin Duvernay. We want you to get a chance during this program to meet the two other latest Jaguars or two more of the latest Jaguars as well. But when we come back, let's talk golf. Our friend Lee Smith is the executive director of the Players' Championship. He joins us to talk about day one after this on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. Now, another classic moment in Jags history. Cook puts it down. Right kicks it up. The 53-yarder is good, good, good. What a magnificent ending in London. 1010XL, home of the Jaguars. Hey folks, Mike Dempsey here. You've heard me talking about Hello Windows and Doors, and with great ratings and expert reviews, you know they're high-quality and energy-efficient products. So what's your next step? How about scheduling a free consultation or just stop by the Pella showroom right there on Phillips Highway next to Tesla? Pella's professional consultants will guide you through your entire project from start to finish. From simple projects to complex renovations, their team has the experience needed to make your project a success. And that's the quality and service you can expect from Pella Windows and Doors. 
Bueller Air Conditioning presents... Are You Cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice a Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Lauren Brooks here for Hodges Mazda. Why buy from Hodges Mazda at the Avenues? Because they strive to ensure a satisfying and comfortable car buying experience. That's why the sales staff doesn't work on commission, allowing Hodges Mazda to put your best interests first. Whether you're looking for a brand new Mazda or a pre-owned vehicle, Hodges Mazda has a large selection to help you choose from. And every vehicle purchased from Hodges Mazda comes with two years free maintenance and free car washes for life. Now that is peace of mind. So visit Hodges Mazda today or shop online at HodgesMazda.com. Nick and here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. He thinks he knows what he's talking about. Of course. Find out if he does. Is there anything else we need to know? Catch CBS Sports Senior NFL writer Pete Prisco every Friday afternoon on The Franchi Show. Brought to you by Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles. Crosser here. When it comes to the business of selling your home, there's one promise I can give you that will deliver. And that promise is chadandsandy.com. That's chad, A-N-D, sandy.com. How do I know this promise is guaranteed? Because they say so and then they deliver. You see, Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed upon price and deadline or they will buy it. So whatever problems you think you're having selling your home, there is your simple solution. They're going to buy it if it's not sold for exactly what you want. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to maximize your equity, and you can do it with the real estate team of Chad and Sandy. They have a plan and the experience to sell your home fast for maximum cash this spring. John and Ursula in Green Meadows wrote in, I, we weren't in great health, decided to downsize to an easier place to manage. After 185 days, our home failed to sell. We went to Chad and Sandy, sold in 12 days. You can too at chadandsandy.com. The Players' Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. Good afternoon, a sunny and 75 degree day out at TPC Sawgrass. Taylor Dahl here, continuing on this afternoon with your Players' Championship updates. This update is brought to you by Atlantic Self Storage and First Coast Honda Dealers. Starting off some updates on players' parking Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all sold out. So make sure if you are heading out to TPC on Sunday, you grab parking before. That is gone also. Several other ways to get there this year to the tournament, ride share, golf cart parking, bike racks, all available. Swingbyplayers.com for more information and passes. And now let's look at the leaderboard all in the clubhouse at the top as of right now sitting 
at the very top, Xander Schauffele, who carded his first bogey-free round here at the Players. Tied with him at seven under for that top spot is Roy McIlroy, who tallies his third career 65 at TPC. Just behind those two, Nick Taylor, who ended his day strong, birdieing four on the back nine to finish at six under for round one. A group of guys behind him at five under also in the clubhouse. Tom Hoagie, former champion Jason Day, and Ludwig Aberg making his debut at, and a strong start here at Players' Championship, all five under par for the day. Corey Connors matches Matt Kuchar's start with two birdies and an eagle to start off the day. He is currently at four under. Reigning champ Scotty Scheffler is two under through six hold. His grouping with Justin Thomas, one under, and Ricky Fowler is one over so far on the day. I'll be back in 20 minutes with another Players' Championship update right here on 1010XL. Atlantic Self Storage, the official storage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Garage getting too full with stuff? Need a place to park your boat or RV? Store it all at Atlantic Self Storage. Tons of locations in Northeast Florida. 24-hour access and month-to-month -month rental agreements. Moving, they can help with supplies. Heading to the players? Look for the storage locker and free bag check at the fan gift shop courtesy of Atlantic Self Storage. Go to AtlanticSelfStorage.com to find the location and move-in special closest to you. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's an old rock Thursday. Music the way it should be, or at least used to be, on The Frangie Show. Frank Frangie, Hayes Carline, Lauren Brooks, RJ Saunders back at World Headquarters. Fleetwood Mac today on Old Rock Thursday. Best golf course around, have the best band around. You, you Fleetwood Mac guy? Um, Sue is. Okay, yeah, um, okay. So Fleetwood you know, Mac's yeah. in the family. I'm more of a Nelly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I see. I would have I see the shoes. I see the game. I, yeah. I should have I guessed that. Uh, Lee Smith was the executive director of the Players' Championship. All right, day one for you. How'd it go? Any surprises? I mean, look, you looked smooth and gorgeous from our standpoint. No, it's uh, it's been great. You know, obviously, like we were talking off air, um, weather and uh, and sunshine makes everybody smile, and uh, and so we've seen that going around outside the ropes, inside the ropes. You know, Rory, Xander Shoffley, another past champion, and Jason Day. Um, you know, having really really good good days. Young player Ludwig Abair. Uh, having a really good day also. Golf course is playing well. Lots of birdies uh, being made out there. Hole in one by Ryan Fox uh, out there today. So uh, exciting, exciting round of golf. I want to commend you because I thought the Jack Nicholas moment at 140 with Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, and Ricky Fowler was so incredibly well thought out and executed. What was that moment like for you seeing that all come together? It was really, really cool. You know, there, there's sometimes you you don't understand maybe, and, and, and you guys do in, in this line of work, but everybody doesn't understand how many things have to align just to make something like that happen um, between Jack and, and broadcast partners and – uh, you know, volunteers, you, 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 want, you have to engage so many people, but you want to keep it as a surprise and make it a very, very special moment. Um, and so I hope to, to hear those players think the same thing, that uh, to see our, as we celebrate our 50th anniversary, to see our first champion do that. Um, and, and the players to think that it was very special uh, at that particular group, that particular time of day. Uh, and the way it was done, and then our broadcast partner, who who are this week are bringing back Roger Malby and Gary Koch, uh, you know, very popular and 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 famous uh, stars in their own right, um, bringing them back and and have him and in, uh, interview Jack on the on the first tee afterwards, um, and so yeah, it, it takes a, a lot of prep, a lot of thought, and uh, and fortunately, you always hope that it comes off. Uh, seamless and like that, and and uh, I actually watched it on TV, and it was really really cool. We were standing at the first tee, kind of on the hill, overlooking it, and I see this white. How'd you Lexus. guys find out it was happening? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> what, what, we, we, were, we got intel, bro. Yeah. We, okay, were we were told something okay. special. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. in our business, we have sources. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So no, we're standing there, and I see this white Lexus go by, and I'm like. I think that might be him. Yeah. Yeah. That might be the golden yeah. bear. And then yeah, it seemed like he really enjoyed it too. Yeah, I you know. 
obviously Jack is is one of the best ever, if not the best, depending on your perspective. And um, you know, certainly he's he's won so many times and so many things that um, I don't blame him for not remembering some things yeah. and remembering other things that are more vivid. But I think he's a a you know loves the history of the game. And then certainly has loved what has happened since he's he's played and seen the game grow, and so to really activate him amongst uh, the 50th anniversary or 50th anniversary, our only three-time champion, um, that uh, and activate him in a in a special way that obviously is not a load on on him from a bandwidth standpoint too. Uh, you know, I think was really really cool. Yeah, we all said this. He's the only three-time champion. He's the first champion, but beyond that, he's dang Jack Nicholas. Yeah, I mean that. That's I mean Jack Nicholas was here. You know, that, I mean that. I think that's the thing that we we all had to kind of pinch ourselves a little bit. I mean, Jack Nicholas was here. Whose idea was it? It it was a uh, it was an idea. Uh, I would say a very uh, group effort. Okay, um, take credit. Between, yeah, <laughs> um, we we knew that we wanted to look back at at anniversary champions, past champions, local champions. Um, and there were a lot of different ideas. There were some ideas that were maybe similar to other events. There were some ideas that were, um, you know, when crowds weren't going to be here, um, you know, there, and so we, we really vetted a lot of different things. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, we also pay respect to Jack and not try to dominate his time and that, you know, yeah, he's not sure. going to go down there and announce a full wave of players or, right, or right, whatever right. it might be. So really to find the, the best way to interject him, the number one player in the world, our defending champion, uh, a couple other past champions, uh, you know, with our first champion, I thought was a really cool opportunity. I mean, you think about what would that be, six players' championships yeah. uh, in that in that foursome. Um, That's right. You know, six out of 50. So yeah. I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Very, very cool. Absolutely. Uh, long way to go, obviously, but uh, Roy McIlroy with a brilliant 65 today, seven under to open. What would it mean to the Players' Championship for Rory to win it again? It would be awesome. Um, you know, I, I remember Rory, the, the shoes, uh, you know, being a shoe guy, the gold <laughs> bottoms and holding up. That was actually the first time that we gave out the gold man trophy. That was the transition from the, the glass trophy to our Tiffany uh, gold man trophy. So that would be a, a, you know, a 50th anniversary celebration of the first time we gave out the gold man to him. Um, and certainly Rory, you know, over the last couple of years has been um, – a, a poster board or poster child or whatever you want to call it for the PGA Tour and and the legacy and the history that this tour stands for. Uh, and so to put his name as a, as a two-time champion amongst only a few people I think would be really cool for the event. I also think we're not missing Tiger whatsoever. The crowds and the excitement here, I don't, I don't think there's this, oh, I wish Tiger was here. I don't find that sentiment anywhere on the golf course. No, I, you know, look, I, I think um, as, as we spoke about leading up to, you know, if, if we want Tiger to be here if he's competitive and if he's healthy and he's going to plan on playing four rounds. Um, and, and obviously he didn't feel that way. And so hopefully his next time back he does feel like he can contend and, and play four rounds. I agree with you that that I don't think anybody's walking around, um, you know, necessarily missing him. That being said, he is a additive beast, <laughs> um, and and so having him here would would certainly be awesome. But um, I agree with you. It's uh, you know we're 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 having a great time. Hopefully this weather continues this way, and um, and by the time Sunday comes, we won't uh, we won't have have missed him. All right. So as you move forward now. Obviously, weather dictates uh, course conditions. We all know that. Um, it's going to be good weather. It, it, it looks like there's not much rain, I don't think. Um, warm weather. I don't wind, like you said, the wind will change. You told us yesterday the wind's going to change, and, and we think it will. But do you do you do you not water it as much? Do you do, what do you do? I mean, do you try do you try and toughen it up? I mean, does, does that happen? Yeah. Um, well, you know that we we um, we mowed the. Uh, rough at three inches on Tuesday. Okay. Um, and we won't mow it again. Okay. So you know everything that comes from Tuesday will uh, and the and the rough is really really thick and really really lush. So it'll it'll only get longer and longer. Okay. Um, we certainly will allow. We'll we'll only isolate uh, our our watering and irrigation programs. We're not gonna you know flood the place. It's okay. let it let it dry out. It's certainly soft um, yeah. on, on the green, so they'll only firm up. 
uh, and certainly Mother Nature uh, cooperating with us will be a will be a great thing. But it um, you know it looks like the next three days there's some chances for isolated uh, thunderstorms, which you know as we said, I mean that's Florida, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when that's we right. wake up, we're we've got a chance of an isolated thunderstorm. So, um, you know, hopefully those things push off or maybe come, uh, you know, overnight or early in the morning if they do happen. And a couple players that kind of struggled today. I mean, we were talking about the scoring and when uh, Scheffler and, and JT and Fowler's group teed off, they were T97, uh, the reflection of the great scoring. But Jordan Spieth, two over. Hovland, one over. Uh, so, I mean, it's still – obviously challenging for even some of the the best guys out here because i i would think with with what rory and and xander did spieth and hovland not dead but boy they're going to need something extraordinary over the final three days to have a chance at this thing yeah I, well look i think that hayes that that shows you that the golf course isn't playing easy right um you got to go out there with your game in order to score but if you've uh if you're sharp um there's there's scoring opportunities out there which you know that's this golf course, right? There's there's a double bogey around every corner, um, but at the same time, if if you're if you're sharp, don't let Pete die uh, and his, you know, water that peaks out and bunkers that right. peaks out. These these areas get get in your head that if you're just a a, a whisker off, um, you know, there's a bogey or double waiting for you. What can you tell us, Lee, about Corey Connors, who's currently four under of the guys on the golf course? He's having the best day so far. Obviously, the morning round uh, in the clubhouse already. Yeah, I wonder if if you know, like he and Nick Taylor, as as Canadian players, kind of kind of play off each other um, as somebody that would like to, you know, see their Canadian flag yeah. flying from yeah, the that's right. uh, for the next 365 days. You know, Corey is is known as a you know unbelievable ball striker, um, and uh, every once in a while when he gets a couple of putts to fall. Um, you know, he can get it going. So, you know, this is a perfect golf course for him. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't, he's not one of the longest hitters out there. Um, but he, uh, you know, I think if he gets a couple of putts to fall, he's, uh, this is a golf course that fits him pretty well. We were uh, watching Lauren and I were standing on five. I, th- I told you, I think <clears throat> I, I, we've had this talk. 14, 18, five, and seven for me are the Bears. We sat there and watched five, three bogeys. So, so, so to your point, it's not an easy golf course. And it's not, yeah. it's not playing easy. When someone goes seven under, they're playing. They're golfing their ball. That's Absolutely. the bottom line. Absolutely, and and you know Rory's got, um, you know he 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 feels good around here. So yeah. I think he's he's got uh, when he comes in. I mean, he, as I I think I watched last week, he hit the ball pretty well. He struggled a little bit, I think, with distance control and that type of thing. You know, when when you're hitting it solid and you're only struggling with just a little small piece, those are things you can you can work out the kinks in three practice round days, uh, you know, that type of thing, which seems like he did. Even his bogey on 18, where he put the tee shot in the water, he ends up, the bogey putts only three feet, nine inches. Yeah. So, I mean, it just, again, speaks to how much he, I mean, a lot of times you get, you know, put it in the drink on 18, that can get ugly quick. Uh, you rarely have a, I'd say, a pretty drama-free putt for bogey in that circumstance so it, it just speaks to the control of his game and but i'm excited to see how xander responds too you know i mean he this would be by far his biggest win mm-hmm. and he's one of the greatest players now for the last two or three years out here from a consistency standpoint uh so if it continues boy that could just be fantastic back nine drama on sunday absolutely how uh how great would it be we we're the rules official roots for a playoff, um, which uh, we we love Stephen Cox, but we're like, you know what? I love the drama, but I don't need to go deep on Sunday, okay? Uh, yeah. I don't I don't yeah. mind if we ended at six o'clock. Um, but the uh, no, it, it would it would be great to see you know names like that up at the up at the board, and and quite honestly, that's what we expect. We expect that. This golf course, uh, you know what? What? What's the phrase? It always delivers. Yeah. Um, and you know, we uh, we expect the cream to rise to the top. You know, when it comes to Sunday, for sure. And you said I can find Cole Swindell somewhere out here on the he golf was, course. He, yeah, he, he was. He was just out sitting just, out here, yeah. and you, Lee <laughs> just told the, you that. Yeah, look, uh, yesterday. I, I gotta take the rest of the show off. Yeah, looked for the guy in jeans and a in a big bucket hat. <laughs> yeah, he was walking around all over. And That'll be easy to uh, find. He loves it. He, you know, he said, "I'll, I'll." He goes, I'll, you, you, "Can I play next year? I'll play next <laughs> year." He said, "I love it here." Uh, Lee, final thing. Um, fans listening now. Everyone's listening. A lot that didn't come out of today. What to look for tomorrow? Uh, someone's driving down the road now. They're coming tomorrow. 
a tip of what to do, what to look for, for, for someone listening right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, a couple of things. I mean, I think it, on, a, on a grand scale, we're, we're really nearing a sellout uh, for Saturday. Um, okay. Friday's getting close, but really, really close on Saturday. Um, and so if you're, you're still, tickets still available. So if you're looking to, or you're thinking about coming Saturday or you see that great forecast, um, I, I jump on those things now. They're, they're going quickly and, and we're continuing to monitor that by every couple hour. Um, second thing is, uh, you know, always check the websites and our social channels just yeah. for prohibited items of, of what you can bring in. Um, I'd come early uh, yes. to, to make sure you don't get stuck in traffic. And if you're looking to have a really, really good time out here, we've got ride share, we've got shuttles. Um, so, so be smart, be safe, uh, you know, when you're coming out. Because, um, you know, we want everybody to have a great time, and that's what we try to build. Um, but we want everybody to get here, and we want everybody to get home safely as well. A one A wasn't bad today. I mean, it was it was it was a good flow to it today. So and uh, yeah, but you have a helicopter. Well, there's that. There's that but I went <laughs> over A one A. Yeah. And you, and you noticed it wasn't too bad. Huh? <laughs> That's All right. right. Uh, Lee Smith, executive director. You can try and stop by tomorrow if you can. It's a busy day. But 3:40 is when uh, Lee stops by. We'll be able then to assess kind of who's making the cut, who's not. And we'll talk about that. Lee, thanks, buddy. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Back in a moment. This is 1010 XL and 92.5 FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. 1010XL. One game. 1010XL. We shut them down because we can't. 1010XL. This is your time. 1010XL. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. At Randy Marion Cadillac in Jacksonville, we have over 40 2024 all-electric Cadillac lyrics in stock. Take advantage today of two awesome incentives. First, a $7,500 rebate applied to the purchase price directly at sign. That's a $7,500 rebate with no need to wait for tax time. And second, a $1,500 credit for a high-speed in-home charger. Over $9,000 in savings. Now's the time to drive away in luxury in a brand new all-electric Cadillac lyric. Randy Marion Cadillac, Southside Boulevard, Jacksonville, plus tax tech title 899 admin fee and resist all. Tell them Jennifer sent ya. Frank Franzi here for South State Bank. Look, I depend on South State for so many things, personal accounts, small business banking, and banking for our nonprofit. South State Bank can help you reach all your financial goals too, whether you're just starting out or focused on financial planning. South State offers convenience with their online and mobile banking. You should check out South State Bank as they were recently recognized by Forbes as one of America's best banks. That's South State Banking Forward. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hear the Florida Gators all season on 1010XL. Brought to you by Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hello, First Coast. I'm sure by now you have seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We're an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We're committed to customer service, reliability, and have an unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today from GFL Green for Life. This is former NFL quarterback David Garrard. If your knees have taken a beating and you're finally ready to do something about it, then let Southeast Orthopedic take a look. Come on, do your knees a favor. Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. David Garrard here. I've had the PRP treatment from Southeast Orthopedic Specialists, and my knees are really doing well. Platelet-rich plasma treatment may be the answer for whatever is hurting you. Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Trivia enthusiasts, Tuesday night is your night. Gather your team and join us at Players Grill in Mandarin or Miramar for the ultimate trivia showdown. It's a whole lot of fun every Tuesday starting at 7 p.m. Are you ready to prove you're the trivia champions? Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. If you owe the IRS and can't pay, now is the time to call J. David Tax Law. 
After a two-year hiatus, the IRS has resumed their aggressive collections letters. Don't wait. Call J. David Tax Law or visit jdavidtaxlaw.com. Home of the Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Imagine the perfect outdoor living space, a beautiful stone kitchen, waterfall, fire pit, pergola, stone walkway. Now there's one place to bring all of your design ideas to life. The Art of Natural Stone on Beach Boulevard and also by Bartram Springs. Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? Yes, your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air duct specialists out and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning and while we're at it we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero res. Spelled forward or backwards. It's it's the right right way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C Duck Duck Rooter is now hiring plumbers. We offer excellent weekly pay, paid holidays, health insurance, 401k, and so much more. Apply now at DuckDuckRooter.com. That's DuckDuckRooter.com and click on the careers page. Duck Duck Rooter is an equal opportunity employer. The Players' Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. Good afternoon, Taylor Dahl here with my finals player, my final player's championship update this afternoon. This update is brought to you by Duck Duck Rooter. Starting off on some updates for players parking Thursday, Friday, and Saturday all sold out. Make sure if you are heading out to TPC on Sunday, you grab parking before that is gone. Also, several other ways to get there though. Rideshare, golf cart parking, bike racks, all available. Swing by players.com for more information on that and passes now let's take a look at the top of the leaderboard all in the clubhouse as of right now sitting atop is Xander Schauffele who carded his first bogey free round here at the players tied with him at seven under for that top spot is Rory McIlroy who shot his third career 65 at TPC just behind those two Nick Taylor who ended his day strong birdieing four on the back nine to finish at six under for round one Group of guys behind him at five under, also in the clubhouse, Tom Hoagie, former champion Jason Day, and Ludwig Aberg making his debut at Players Championship, all five under. Corey Connors, what a start, matches Matt Kuchar's start with two birdies and an eagle to start off his day. Now just tallied another birdie on his seventh hole to bring him to T4 at five under through seven he started on the back nine. Reigning champ Scotty Scheffler is two under through eight holes. His grouping with Justin Thomas also two under. And a couple names to keep an eye on this afternoon that are two under par, Max Homa and Tony Finau. Coming up to close out the afternoon with you, Andrew Gibson updating you every 20 minutes live from TPC Sawgrass right here on 1010XL. XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's an old rock Thursday. Music the way it should be, or at least used to be, on the Frangie Show. How do you choose just eight Fleetwood Mac? You know songs? what? We, you could like Hayes, like Hayes said, you could do it every month and not have a not repeat songs, couldn't you? This might be. Is this the toughest band in order to narrow down? Yeah, I mean, there's there, there there's of, a handful of, of, of the of the number of ones of the Beatles of the 
of the you know of, of the yeah. handful of bands yeah, out Beatles there. Beatles have to do early Beatles, yeah, late Beatles. Yeah, and so of the of the handful of bands out there, um, yeah, I would say there's about there's about seven or eight bands mm-hmm. that is awfully hard to get eight songs. Ian Rappaport has news. Oh, I, let's I, hear I it. Love, he he love, broke news on our show I, the I other love day. News. What you got? Ian Rappaport, a dark horse emerges. The Jaguars are closing in on a deal to add a huge presence to their defense as they are set to sign former 49ers defensive tackle Eric, Eric Armstead. Armstead, sources say. We talked about it yesterday. They That was the one, Here just like Mitch Morse, that's one of the ones that got our attention. I, the Mitch Morse, we talked about it on the program yesterday. That, with all due respect to the, the Ridley stuff, it is what it is, it happened. For me, the fact that the chance that they can get a big physical defensive tackle, that is a big, big deal. Getting Eric Armstead, is a, he's a six foot seven, 280-pound mammoth defensive tackle, a very, very big part of that, that 49ers defense. Trent Baalke obviously knows, uh, very, knows him very well. They were not done, and, and I'm still not sure they're done. The comment we made yesterday on this program, you started it with, hey, look, they had a lot of money they were offering Ridley. He didn't take it. The money's still there. Why don't we, and, and I think my comment was, let's make it a defensive tackle. I think that's what I said to you when you said, right? I think yeah. we had that conversation yesterday mm-hmm. on the program. And, and I think, uh, again, with, with Armstead, it's exactly what they need. He's, he's, he'll be 31 in November. So it's, it's you know, look, he still he should have two, three good years left. And he was playing a lot of snaps for the 49ers. Yeah, he's when a good he, player. When he was out there. I mean, his snap percentage last year, he played in 12 games. Uh, but it was 65% when he was out there. The year prior, he played in nine games, and it was 62%. Uh, so, I mean, this is somebody that when he is active, when he is available, I mean, he, he this is not a 20-snap-a-game run stuffer. This is a player player. Uh, this is an all-around great addition if they're able to uh, get this to the finish line, and it certainly appears like they're going to. So I uh, – how does this change them? I mean, I think Armstead is a starter. I think Devon Hamilton now uh, is more of a rotational piece to the puzzle. Uh, and, I mean, Armstead becomes their best interior lineman, mm-hmm. I think, by a good bit. Well, and he plays di- – he's a different player than, than – he's the same player that Roy Robertson Harris is. He's more th- angular three technique guy. Devon's more of a two gap guy, but you got three guys for those two spots now. I, so I, I, I think he's more th- – I think he competes with Roy Robertson Harris. I think Devon is still the, the two-gap, two-down, run-stuffing guy. This is what the Athletic has to say about him. For a team that needs a five technique in a three-four scheme, he would be a really good fit. Yeah, I don't think that's what they are. I, I think Obviously, he, I yeah, think, we don't know exactly. I think he's going to be a three technique in a four-three scheme is what I think they're going to ultimately play. Now, we'll see. I might be, they haven't said that. No, they haven't said that. But either yet. way, he's a, yeah. listen, let's, let's don't get into the weeds too much. He's a big physical defensive lineman. And we said this, how many times we said on this program, the two biggest weaknesses of that football team, the two biggest weaknesses of that football team were the interior of the offensive line and the interior of the defensive line. Wasn't that kind of sort of a roundly, a roundly held opinion? 100%. The interior, the interior of both. Was I thought the major concern, right? Didn't we all? I think of we course, all, you can't run the ball and you can't stop the run. We, we all felt about that, that way. We all yeah, felt that absolutely. way. Absolutely. So here's what the athletic, as far as a description, uh, says: He's a big man with great agility and balance for his size, making him dangerous as a one-on-one pass rusher. Even if his style is more finesse than power, he can be disruptive in the run game as well, shedding blocks, showing tackle-to-tackle range. Though he's not fa- the factor in pursuit that he once was, since he is a little bit older. But I mean, I think. If you were to tell us there's going to be a new center, hopefully the right guard plays better because he's not dealing with injury, and there's going to be a new defensive tackle that you don't have to necessarily draft with the 17th pick overall, those are massive wins. And I don't think it's an accident, Hayes, that there's Morse, Armstead, Darby. There's a handful of guys that are 30-something. I think sometimes you want to go young because you're too old, Sometimes you want to go old because you're too young. And I, I mean, I think that's real. I think that's a real thing. I think a veteran presence, I can tell you a veteran presence, I think I told you off the air a couple of days ago that I thought that was something that was very important to them on, on many fronts. Yeah, this is a player that obviously is going to command respect throughout the locker room. I mean, first off, he's 6'7". 290. Yeah. So, uh, he's Calais. Know, that, that, 
that helps <laughs> command respect. But yeah. uh, but obviously he's had a, a fantastic career, and uh, yeah, he's going to bring obviously a lot of playoff savvy, a lot of uh, you know good perspective on what's important and what isn't, uh, and and when you have to hit the gas and when you don't. Um, and so I think from a leadership standpoint, he'll be a phenomenal addition. I mean, I, I think between Morris and Armstead, I mean, th- those are two just gigantic home runs for what this team needed. Uh, again, I, I don't think this has elevated them to – I don't think – I'm not going to sit here and say, well, they've passed the Texans. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, they're, you know, they're right there with the Chiefs and the Ravens. And, you know, but, I, but again, the AFC is so loaded. The Jaguars, I think, were going into the offseason like – can you stay in the mix to be good? Well, I think they've certainly done that. I mean, I, I it is obviously it's going to be tough to be one of the seven because there's a minimum of 11 teams that really look strong in the AFC. Injuries will take out, a, you know, some, and, and hopefully they don't take out the Jaguars. But the Jaguars have done a really nice job with limited resources available compared to their rivals of adding what I think is going to be supremely impactful players this off season, and, and again, they still have the 17th pick and the 48th pick. If Ridley had gone to the Texans, wouldn't that have made you far more concerned than going to the Titans? Yeah, I, him going to the Titans, I actually think is hilarious because <laughs> uh, I don't think they're a factor. So to me, they just flushed a bunch of money away on a guy that isn't going to be good when they get good again. Like in my, yeah, I'm, Tennessee's probably two years away at a minimum. And so, uh, you know, I mean, he'll be 32. Uh, so I, I think that the Ridley to Tennessee deal is, is not a factor at all. But, uh, yeah, had he gone to the Texans, then obviously that would have been uh, incredibly concerning. Yeah. Let's hear some comments from one of the uh, Jaguars, most recent Jaguars. Uh, Kenneth Darby met with the uh, – Ronald Darby, rather, met with the media today, the former Seminole. This is his sixth team now in, his, in those 10 years. Uh, but he's been a pretty good player. Look, there's a lot of talk that Ryan Nielsen wants to play man-to-man – Darby made it clear his background is man-to-man. Like, I got a background of playing man. Like, that's what I came in the league doing. That's what I did all through college, all through my career. You know, different places I went to, we ran different schemes, and I got better at doing that. But my number one thing always been playing man. I was always a bump and run corner from the Buffalo days. So it wasn't really that much they had to sell to me. He also has had some health issues, two ACL injuries that he talked about as well. It ain't no surprise to me because I know my mindset and how my body feel. It's like the times that I tore my ACLs, I was playing like great ball. Like I felt great. And it was they all was like non-contact, both of them. It's like me landing funny and things like that. So like last year, especially towards the second half, when like I was really getting my legs back under me, I was feeling great. And like right now I feel great. I can still run, feel good. So, yeah, it wasn't that much. And finally... Look, one thing he likes about this team, he played for a Ravens team that's good. He plays for a Jaguars team that he believes is upwardly mobile. I didn't do it before going to teams that didn't really have it all the way together. Then, like, early years, a new head coach and stuff, and you got to deal with just that early year. But, like, I know this team, you know, is moving forward, moving up. Ronald Darby, uh, the brand new cornerback. Uh, you've now heard from three of the players. Darnell Savage met with the media today. Mac Jones did as well. And we do have news about a brand new Jaguar. Eric Armstead apparently will sign with the team as a very important defensive tackle. We'll talk about that and more. We're live at the Players Championship, football and golf, and a whole lot more. This is two. This is ten ten XL and ninety two point five FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on ten ten XL. Hit back with Hastings. It's so much more than great golf. It's my favorite week of the year. Track your favorite golfers and get live Southeast Orthopedic Specialist leaderboard updates from the players. Brought to you by Monahan Jewelers, Coastal Equipment, and Roundtree Side. At Hodges Mazda, we are proud of our solid reputation in the Jacksonville community. Lauren Brooks here. As your hometown Mazda dealer, our high customer service standards and our huge inventory of new and used cars provide our customers a consistently first-rate car buying experience. Our professional non-commissioned sales team puts your best interest first without exception. And every vehicle purchased from Hodges Mazda comes with two years free maintenance. Visit Hodges Mazda today or shop online at HodgesMazda.com and discover the Hodges Mazda difference. Hey folks, Mike Dempsey here. You've heard me talking about Hello Windows and Doors, and with great ratings and expert reviews, you know they're high-quality and energy-efficient products. 
So what's your next step? How about scheduling a free consultation or just stop by the Pella showroom right there on Phillips Highway next to Tesla? Pella's professional consultants will guide you through your entire project from start to finish. From simple projects to complex renovations, their team has the experience needed to make your project a success. And that's the quality and service you can expect from Pella Windows and Doors. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Ahead, we build platforms for digital business. We help create your platform for digital business by weaving together advances in cloud infrastructure, intelligent operations, and modern applications. Digital business is comprised of five pillars. We call them imperatives because they're a must-have, not a nice-to-have. We enterprise cloud, integrated security, scaled DevOps, intelligent operations, and relentless automation. Need help with digital transformation? Ahead. Learn. Grow. Achieve. Weekends were made for sports, and I'll tell you my take on this weekend's best options. Pick it here. Watch for Weekend with Dan on YouTube and Facebook. Weekend with Dan is brought to you by Stone Core. We do outdoors better. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion from My Bookie. If you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, Bet the nonstop action of the madness with MyBookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie: you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today Only with my book. There are three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and if you stay in your home long enough, a new roof. Pick it here for our friends at Lockhart Roofing. Nobody better in Jacksonville. How do I know? They are a local certified Master Elite contractor, and that means they have a GAF Master Elite warranty. That's the best in the roofing industry. In this day and age, don't settle for cheaper discount roofers. Lockhart Roofing has been here for decades. They aren't going anywhere. Call my friends at Lockhart Roofing, 994-3851. That's 994-3851. Lockhart Roofing, Jacksonville's best for Jacksonville people. The Players' Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. I'm Andrew Gibson with this tournament update from the 50th Players' Championship. This update brought to you by Taco Lou and Kanaya Water, Jacksonville. Xander Shoffley and Roy McElroy are setting the pace for round one here at the Players. They are tied for first at seven under par. Canadian Nick Taylor is one shot back, and 2016 Players Champion Jason Day is two shots back of the lead. Rory tied the Players' record today with 10 birdies in his first round, his most birdies in a round since the final round of the Canadian Open in 2022. Xander Shoffley carded his first bogey-free round at the Players in 15 rounds, a 65 today for Xander Shoffley. It's a magnificent weather day for round one at the Players. Hope you're making your plans to be here. Limited tickets are still available at theplayers.com slash tickets. Don here from Taco Lou. Now that football season has come and gone and it's getting a little warmer outside, it must be time for more golf. At least for us anyway. 
you love golf and you love tacos, we've got your spot out at 12. Tacos on 12, of course. It's time for the players, and we couldn't be more excited. We'll be slinging tacos behind 12 green all week long. You golf fans make your way, our way, for a great bite and maybe even a margarita or two. We'll be live at the players. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's an old rock Thursday. Music, the way it should be, or at least used to be, on The Frangie Show. Let me tell you what. I don't, Carlin. I don't know what you got in your life. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know about you. I don't care about you. Yeah. Okay. But let me tell you what I got in my life today. Okay. Jack Nicholas. Gorgeous weather. Mm-hmm. One of the most famous golf courses in the world. Stevie Nicks, and a brand new defensive tackle. Pretty sweet. How's that for? How's that day going? And Lauren Brooks lip syncing. Okay. Yeah. And I probably should have led with that. Yeah. Probably buried the lead there. That's oh, the only reason Rhiannon we stream so these great. shows. That's exactly. I mean, it literally is <laughs> the right. only reason that we're doing it. That is. That is. Yeah. That is. And they didn't want to just do <laughs> the Frangie show. So yeah. they're like, well, we're going to have to stream every we might, show. Because well, we, then they'll but say, why did only they exactly. get it? You know, that wouldn't be any good. So. Well, if the rest of y'all can lip sync like we can, then, you know. Uh, I didn't know. So this this song is about a witch? About um, an old Irish I, I, don't, I don't know that. Is that right? I didn't know that either. Oh, okay. Is Stevie well, Nicks like wrong. sort of a witch or something like witch? Gypsy. Like gypsy? She's, okay. She's I, like a gypsy. I didn't know that, but I didn't know Yeah, that. I didn't know that. I've always just loved this song. You're always just dropping knowledge. You are. You're, you're I, I mean, half the stuff I just make up. Okay, but you, just, you give if it sounds entertaining, I'll say it. Yeah. The, uh, Even if it's not true. <laughs> but this, I think, is true. The, well, I will confirm momentarily. The, uh, so. I thought Ed, Wer- Ed Werder is a big Fleetwood Mac okay. fan, so he'll respond on Twitter whenever there's like a Fleetwood Mac thing. Rhiannon is right. the name of a Welsh goddess. According to myth, Rhiannon, the goddess of fertility in the moon, shuns a god and marries a mortal man. That god then frames her for the murder of her own son, and she's forced to stand at the entrance to a city and tell everyone entering that she killed her child. How about that? Wow, so it's probably maybe depends on your perspective whether she's a witch. Yeah. Probably depends, yeah. She's technically a Welsh goddess. Okay. She go. wrote this song with the none knowledge other than you dropped. The, no, the knowledge you're dropping right now is great. Well, stuff. thank Ed Werder. I think I got the, that from Ed Werder. By the way, did, didn't she and Lindsay write a lot of stuff together? Yes. I think they, they were they were I mean, they were married. They were busy. Yeah, they were they were married. Did they actually get married? Oh, I thought they they were a couple. I thought they, they just, were a couple. I don't know that they ever got married. Okay, I just assumed they were. Well, and they, they were never convicted. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. Too. She actually said she didn't know about the story until after she wrote the song. Yeah. How can that possibly be? <laughs> I don't know. You know, whenever we interview I mean, I get they didn't have Wikipedia in 1973 (laughs) or whatever, but wouldn't you have to know the story to write the song? You you would think, right. You would think. Yeah, like you've always said, the movie about that that band will be the greatest ever. I mean, how has that not happened? I know. It'll be be the greatest ever. I mean, I'm I'm not nothing against Oppenheimer. Have you seen that, by the way? I haven't yet. I see people tweeting about it. I want to see it, and eventually it'll fall in my lap, and I'll watch it. I'm telling you, if we if we – if we do make it up, if Suzanne and I make it up to see Stevie Nicks and Billy Joel, yeah, I may never need another concert. I mean, that's that may, pretty good. That that may do it. That's I mean, that, and of all the concerts, I mean, that that one may do it. So, yeah. so um, I, back to I want you to hear the comments of uh, Darnell Savage in a bit, but uh, but before we do, back for a second to the Eric Armstead thing. Do you first of all, he signed a five-year, eighty-five million dollar deal before the twenty season, <clears throat> okay? Uh, he was 30 years old. He was their longest listing, long ex- existing or tenured player on the 49ers. His cap number this year was $28 million. Okay, he was expensive, a very good player, who's been hurt some, but an expensive player, and that's why he. They asked him to take a pay cut. He said no. They cut him. That did not sit well with Debo Samuel and some of the other players. That's how respect. When players speak out about how angry they are, a player got cut. That player is really respected in the locker room. Because you don't see that very often. So that says something about Eric Armstead. Particularly for a winning organization. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to guess, Hayes, and it's just a guess, and I'll ask Trent this uh, when I can, but I'm going to guess if the Ridley deal happened, they wouldn't have the money for this deal. Now, I'm guessing. Agree yeah. or disagree? I And it's a guess. I still am amazed where they're finding this money. So yeah. I'm totally in agreement because yeah. I, you know, I, I was thinking that they were very close to being out of money. So – uh, you know, but obviously they they have it. I mean, because 
they were going to offer Ridley something. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree. If they'd sign Ridley, they probably don't have enough. I wouldn't think. I, you wouldn't for think. For Armstead, but they've done a nice job of yeah. could be wrong, And it could it, be so. wrong Yeah, because I, I knew that was a position of need. But I, but I, I just, I, my gut tells me they weren't going to be able to do both. I'd rather have Armstead. And well, I would, and say, that's where if, I was going to go. Yeah. And it sounds like sour grapes, but, but they do have Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis and Zay Jones and Evan Ingram and Travis Etienne. They got weapons. They did not have. I was not comfortable with what they were putting out there. I think Roy Robertson Harris is a good player. He'll he'll play better than he did this past year. Um, and I think Devon Hamilton, I'm hoping, is back to true health. But that's about it. Right. Now, and that's a position where you play a lot of guys. It's not like either wide receiver or offensive line where the same guys play all the time. Defensive line, you need to rotate them in. You need to rotate them. And uh, this is a bigger need to me than Calvin Ridley would have been. It really is. Well, we talked about yesterday, every player that left or was released, <clears throat> the Jaguars have replaced. But Fadakasi, there had yet to be a replacement for him. And so once you did see that Eric Armstead was released, I think a lot of people got excited, especially since Trent Baalke had drafted him. Uh, we still haven't seen the contract numbers yet for Eric Armstead. So we, yeah, uh, I mean, the deal's not really done no, yet. Yeah, but, it's not But done. if Rappaport's tweeting that it's this close, right. I'd be surprised if it falls through. I mean, hopefully the Titans don't offer Eric Armstrong ninety million dollars <laughs> in the next ten minutes. Thankfully, they but already spent that money. But 80, yeah, you don't eighty-eight guaranteed. <laughs> right. Hopefully, they don't. you don't want to draft. Look, I've been pro drafting a defensive tackle early. Right. Like, I think that was important for this team because you didn't have a guy like Eric Armstead. But you can't draft a grown ass man that's been playing in the National Football League for years upon years. You can draft a guy and develop him and love him at defensive tackle, but you can't draft a guy that has that kind of experience. And team, I, I, again, I make this comparison all the time. In the late 90s, when they were ready to win the Super Bowl, they went and got Hardy Nickerson and Carnell Lake and Bryce Pop and these veteran, accomplished, grown men that were really good NFL players to try and win the Super Bowl. They came up a little bit short. They lost to the Titans three no. times, and they lost in the AFC Championship game. But that's what the, when, when you're in your window, you do this. You go get all these guys when you're in your window, and they're in that window. I, I, again, I, I've, and I've been saying this since before free agency, I'm not saying they're as good as the Chiefs. What I am saying is they will compete – with all those teams in that really loaded AFC, I believe that in all my heart, and I, and I still believe it, and all these moves make me feel that way even more. Darnell Savage, one of the latest to uh, meet with the media, uh, we had, the media asked him a number of questions. Number one, he couldn't wait to talk about how excited he is to be here. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, I think it's it's such a long process as far as just like, it just feels like dragged, like really it's like it's just dragged out kind of. Um, so to finally, you know, figure out where you're going and to get here and have all the same feels that you had when you made the decision, it, it feels good. So I'm happy to be here. And what intrigued him about Jacksonville and why he picked it? Yeah, um, I just think the just the energy, you know, just the energy from the, the, the coaches, just everybody here, you know. Uh, I kind of had a feel for that, you know, just during the whole process. And it stayed true since I've gotten here. So um, I'm excited. And speaking of the energy and the coaches, uh, what does he think of head coach Doug Peterson and his new defensive coordinator, Ryan Nielsen? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, you know, Doug Peterson, he, you know, Super Bowl guy. He won one out as a player and as a coach, I'm pretty sure, right? You guys can fact-check me on that. I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously that. And then, you know, Coach Nielsen, you know, he's been around. He's coached a lot of great players. Um, and he's, he's just his energy. He's a, he's a get-after-it kind of guy, you know, so I, I like that. The comments of Darnell Savage, uh, in all likelihood, the starting safety opposite Andre Sisco. Uh, Antonio Johnson, the second-year player out of Texas A&M. Hayes will provide depth. You would imagine there. You would imagine at nickel. But you would think Darnell Savage starts alongside Andre Sisco at the safety position. Yeah, and, and I think it's a good combo. And, and again, this, this is another thing that I think the, the Jaguars deserve credit for. <clears throat> Antonio Johnson may end up being great. And hopefully he does end up being great. Uh, but we only saw 150 defensive snaps last season. It, it's, it's quite a jump to hand him the keys uh, and, and release Rayshon Jenkins and say, we now believe Antonio Johnson in year two can go from 150 defensive snaps to 1,100, which is what he would probably play if, if he played, if he was available every game. Um, so to be able to go and get a, a veteran like Savage to pair with Cisco. I, it makes all the sense in the world, and now you can I, 
one, Antonio Johnson can can help you at nickel in certain packages against certain teams, uh, which could be very valuable. And uh, and it gives him a, a more time to to grow and develop. And and you know we'll see where things stand at that position a year from now. That we'll worry about that a year from now. But uh, but I think it 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 is smart team building to do it this way. If you'd seen more out of Antonio Johnson, maybe you would feel more comfortable with stepping in. But for him to play basically 15% of the snaps and then just be like, well, he's the new safety and in a league this competitive with the quarterbacks you're going to be facing, that'd been a, a, a big leap of faith. Um, and so I, I think it's smart that uh, for now they, they've got two real veteran guys back there. Yeah, I think there was too much unknown in the secondary. And so the moves that they've made, we just heard from Darby, we just heard from Savage. I think there's some really good additions. And look, I think most people to this point now are zeroing in on cornerback at 17th overall. So there will be another guy added to that secondary. Yeah. So, uh, and again, don't make the assumption, I say it every time they sign one, don't make the assumption that they're through. The dollars that I think it'll take to pay Eric Armstead probably indicates they're through with big dollar guys. Uh, you would you at some point there is a cap. It, at some point you have to stop. But I don't know that they're 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 done acquiring players that weren't on their team last year. Hayes, I, I don't think that's necessarily over. Well, and again, if they could get a Josh Allen deal done and bring that cap figure from twenty four million down to seven or eight for this year with an ex, a big time extension. Uh, then they'd have room. I mean, you're hearing whispers about a trade for Brandon Ayuk. I mean, that would be sensational. Um, but that obviously is going to require a trade for T. Higgins. That's going to require more money than what they have now. Uh, I don't think they want to do anything with Cam Robinson. So the quickest way to quickly create the $15 million you probably need is to get the deal done with Josh Allen. Again, all the numbers are in. All the contracts are done. We're not waiting on this guy to sign there and what is this guy going to get and, you know, we want to make sure that Josh has, you know, the best deal and the Jaguars want to make sure that, that they're not resetting the market. Well, all, we have all those things. Daniil Hunter is, is signed to Houston. There's no one else out there that's on Josh Allen's level that you're, you're worrying about. Burns is signed. So get that deal done. If, if you can, get that deal done. Do it now. Don't wait until July. And then take that money that you're going to have at your disposal to, to impact your club even further. The Jacksonville Jaguars, in this free agent period, this week when the legal tampering began on Monday, it was only Thursday, the actual signing could begin yesterday, the Jacksonville Jaguars have added six starters to their football team. Mitch Morse will be their starting center. I don't think anybody debates that. Gabe Davis will be one of the three starting receivers. Nobody debates that. Devin Duvernay will be a starting kick returner. I'm calling that a starter. You don't have to be one of the 22 to start. Eric Armstead will be a starting defensive lineman. Ronald Darby will be a starting cornerback. Uh, Darnell Savage will be a starting safety. Now, again, there's competition, this and that, but I don't think there's anybody that, that doubts that. Darby is the only one I think we could see maybe not starting. It's conceivable, cause, but I would think between nickel and outside, a guy that's played a lot of man defense, I would be surprised. Me, personally, I would be surprised if he's not a starter. We will see. But I, it, w- it would surprise me if, if those guys aren't. I think that's six starters and a backup quarterback who has started three times as many games as your current backup quarterback – and who has six times as many NFL wins as your current starting quarterback. And again, that is not to knock C.J. Beathard. He is well-respected all around. But the reality, beyond all that, the reality is that Mac Jones has, has 18 National Football League wins. C.J. has three. He's played in a, in a Pro Bowl. He has been around. He's, he's started 42 games compared to C.J.'s 13. So he's clearly... They've brought veteran presence to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots since everything started on Monday. And you still have your draft class. So this Correct. is going to be a, a radically different team. And, you know, Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson were very you know, open about that, uh, you know, that there was going to be a lot of transition this year. I think sensitive to the fact that there wasn't a lot of transition last offseason and the season ended up being a failure. So I think in, in looking at it, uh, this is what they promised, and it's what they're delivering on. There, there was a part of this roster that they wanted to turn over, and they've done a nice job with it, uh, particularly considering you still have the draft class that, that's going to come in. 
you know, I mean, if they don't get the Josh Allen deal done, let's say they're pretty much done in free agency. They don't trade for Higgins. They don't trade for Ayuk, at least now. Well, if you do get the Josh Allen deal done, let's say in June or July before you get to camp, well, you still will have money that, you know, maybe they could be aggressive with a, a trade in training camp. Maybe they could be aggressive in a trade at the trade deadline and assume some salary for the second half of the season. So, uh, you know, there, there's still numerous ways in which they can continue to improve the roster. But I, I think in terms of what they've done, they've been way more productive than what I anticipated. I think it's been a really good week for the Jaguars. Uh, the Ridley thing to me is, is a blip. Uh, in, in totality of looking at the, the positives of what they've, they've brought into the club. Uh, I, again, I'm not going to sit here and say I think they're going to go 12-5 and five now, but I think they've done a much better job of making sure they don't go 7-10 and 10 in a loaded AFC. Uh, they should be right in, in the 9-10-11 win mix. Uh, again, we'll see what happens with the draft, but I expect the draft to look good. I expect that – you know, whoever they get at 17 is going to be a player that everybody's going to be universally excited about. While we're on this, how much truth do you think there is to the rumors that they are trying to or at least contemplating a trade for Brandon Ayuk, the outstanding wide receiver from the 49ers? I, I think, you know, obviously they wanted Ridley. So, I mean, they that's right. They feel a need there. Uh, and, you know, uh, Brandon Ayuk, We've talked about it a lot during their playoff run. I mean, he is a, an explosive. I mean, the yards per catch is outstanding. Obviously, he plays with a lot of other great players. The defense has to, you know, pay attention to McCaffrey and Kittle and, and Debo and, and things like that. I get that. But uh, but he has really come into his own. And, uh, and and it wouldn't surprise me if Balky is a little resistant to drafting a receiver high. He doesn't have a great track record with it. So, you know, we've seen it in free agency, goes and gets Christian Kirk, fantastic move. Uh, Zay Jones, good move. Uh, and so I think in Gabe Davis, I think it's going to be a good move. I think in, in looking at it, Balky might have some self-awareness of, you know, I've struggled to draft this position in, in my career, uh, which is now, you know, significant in its, in its time in, in both places. So I think in looking at it, it, it eliminates that doubt because you're bringing in a player like you would in free agency where you know what they are at this level. So, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely think it could happen. What would it take to get him? Your second rounder this year and maybe your third next? It would, okay. it would be all of that. It would be all of that. The 49ers will ask for 17 overall. The Jags won't do that. Uh, and then whatever's next best would be my guess. The, 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 make no mistake about this. The 49ers are asking for 17 overall. The Jags probably won't do that, and then they'll have to decide if whatever's next best, to Hayes' point, whatever's next best, uh, you'll do it. Uh, he had a 1,300-yard season. Yeah, I'm giving – by the way, I'm going to give my 48th overall yeah, pick and my yeah. third for next year Bra for Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk hasn't missed a game in injury in three years. Uh, he missed one game because they held him out. Uh, he, otherwise, he started and played every game. 75 for 1342 and seven touchdowns this year. 78 for 1,015, eight touchdowns a year before. In the last two years, this guy has 153 catches. He's got 2,300 yards and 15 touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk does. If you can, if there's any truth at all to that rumor, if you can get Brandon Ayuk, in addition to everything else you've done. He's 25 years old. He is. He is. This is a really young guy. That is. Be, that this is a better deal than Calvin Ridley. This Agreed. is. This would be better. You would wind up doing better than had you been able to keep Calvin. This is a. I mean, again, I have no idea if there's any truth to it or not. You never really know. I will say this: more times than not, when there's conversation about a guy, there is some truth, but you don't know whether there is or not. If they pull that off. With everything else they've done, if they pull this one off, and, and again, I don't think you give up 17 overall. I would entertain 17 overall, but I probably wouldn't do it. 17 because 17 overall could be a megastar. But I would, I'd be, I'd be disingenuous if I said I wouldn't entertain it. But I probably at the end of the day wouldn't do it. I'm with you, Lauren. Um, 48 this year and a third next year, I would do it. And I and and I would think that it's that kind of and then you got to pay them too, right? So you got to make sure you're you're prepared to pay them. So interesting stuff. We'll take a break. More in a moment. Ten ten XL ninety two point five FM.
The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. Your home for Gators hoops is 1010XL. The six-seeded Gators get the Bulldogs in round two of the SEC tournament. Florida, Georgia, tonight at 9.30 on 1010 AM. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. It's the 60th Bob Hayes Invitational Track Meet, March 14 through 16. Track events will be held at Hodges Stadium on the campus of UNF. Thursday, March 14, the annual Hall of Fame Gala at the Potter's House International. Friday, March 15, the first collegiate meet at 10 a.m. And the Coach Day Middle School Track Meet, 5 p.m. On Saturday, March 16, the annual Bob Hayes Invitational Track and Field Meet at 8.30 a.m. at Hodges Stadium. For information and tickets, visit bhitm22.org. Presented by the City of Jacksonville and Pepsi. Get ready, get set, and go to the Ready, Set, Go sales event going on now at Arlington Toyota. Arlington Toyota is loaded with fresh, new Toyota inventory. And right now, you can get interest rates as low as 4.9% for 72 months on select new Toyotas. Plus, get credit help with Arlington's pre-approval program, and every new Toyota comes with Arlington's lifetime warranty. It's the Ready, Set, Go sales event in person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard, and online at arlingstoyota.com. When it's time for the March Mania brackets, the bus wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. <laughs> Bonus offers. And when the madness starts and Cinderella <laughs> man steps under the <laughs> BetUS always has your back with <laughs> back to back to back 125% sign up bonuses on your first three deposits <laughs> and even 10% gambler's insurance. <laughs> BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino where the game <laughs> Join today, BetUS Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. I'm Hacker. Get more Gators on the Gator Bites podcast presented by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist with new episodes every Wednesday. Subscribe and listen by searching for 1010XL, Florida Gator Podcast, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or tune in. Hey, sports fans, it's Hayes Carlion for QC Kinetics. Listen, the state of healthcare is always changing. And old ideas like steroids and surgery, they're no longer your only options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative, non-surgical, drug-free treatments that deliver lasting results. Knee pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arthritis, injury. Don't let this pain keep you from living your best life. Give them a call at 904-274-5522 to set up a free consultation at either the Mandarin or Ponte Vedra locations. Again, that's 904-274-5522. Hips, shoulders, elbows, they can all be treated with natural biologics from your own body. Powerful healing agents, highly concentrated. QC Kinetics' advanced state-of-the-art treatments harness and direct your body's natural ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. Give them a call today, 904-274-5522. That's QC Kinetics. The experts at Amco have been fixing cars for almost 60 years. Over that time, they've gotten more complex than ever. That's why our techs undergo rigorous training and certifications, so they can fix anything, including the most complicated repairs that come with some of the latest technologies. After 60 years, there's nothing we haven't seen or fixed. It's how we know cars inside and out. Money tight? We can finance almost anybody. Find the Amco transmissions nearest you at amcojacksonville.com. What defines a hero? Dedication, loyalty, courage. Every day at Amco, we serve heroes. For over 60 years, we've repaired and maintained the most critical public service vehicles. From complex transmissions to simple brake jobs with flexible financing and the extra safety precautions we need. The heroes we serve don't all wear uniforms. They're people like you. At Amco, we're proud to serve all of you. Double A, MCO. Family owned and operated in Jacksonville, Orange Park, St. Augustine, and St. Mary's, Georgia. March Madness is almost here. Well, Spring Sports Brewery in historic Springfield is the place to go for all the tournament action. The atmosphere is unrivaled. Our show will be there live from 3 to 6 on Friday, March 22nd. So come watch hoops and shoot hoops with us. That's Friday, March 22nd from 3 to 6. Soak in all the March Madness at String Sports Brewery. Family, beer, sports, 
and March Madness at Strings. Come out and see us in Springfield and have a ball at March Madness. Ready to spice up your Wednesday? Head to Players Grill for Wing Wednesday. Enjoy mouth-watering wings for just 75 cents each. Plus, make it a happy hour all day long. Cheers to unbeatable deals and good times. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. The Players Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. I'm Andrew Gibson with this tournament update from the 50th Players Championship. This update brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control and Sawgrass Asset Management. Xander Shoffley and Rory McElroy are tied for the lead here at the Players' Championship. Both Rory and Xander shot 7 under 65 in round one to hold a one-shot lead over Nick Taylor. 24-year-old Ludwig Ober from Sweden shot a 5 under 67 today and is two shots back of the lead at 5 under par. Aubert, who makes his home in Tallahassee, shot his 26th round of 67 or better on the PGA Tour since turning pro last year. Defending players champion Scotty Scheffler is tied for 14th on the leaderboard. He just made birdie at number 10. Scheffler now three under par through 10. Our next update from the players in 20 minutes. Ten XL is presented by Barra and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555, Jacksonville. It's an old rock Thursday. Music the way it should be, or at least used to be, on the Frangie Show. Let me guess, this is the only selection from Fleetwood Mac on this old Rock Thursday where Christine McVie is singing. You know, I hadn't thought about it. Hang that's on. A, that's my guess. I didn't break it down that way. <laughs> uh, nope, that's not correct. No? It's not correct. Okay. All right. I, that's, I, it, it, I'm just thinking, I think you'll see that's not correct. I I'll, sta I'll stand corrected intrigued. if I'm wrong about that. Yeah. All right. I yeah, like it. There you go. All right, well, uh, Andrew Gibson is giving you players updates every 20 minutes, so you're certainly staying on top of that if you missed the big story earlier. Xander Shoffley and Maury McElroy both in the clubhouse at 7-under, and then Nick Taylor also 6-under, so just behind them. And it looks like as far as on the golf course right now, Max Homa is 4-under as well as JT Poston and Corey Connors. So for those out on the golf course, certainly I'm sure they are following along with those guys. There's no wind at all. I mean, you look at the palm trees, very, yeah, very little breeze. movement yeah. I mean, in, at all. So, I mean, again, these guys uh, should really – be taking advantage of these conditions. You are correct in that. Uh, my weather app says six miles per hour is our, is our breeze. That's so, perfect. yeah, they, uh, they are shooting low uh, scores, and there's certainly no surprise there. Look, we've talked golf. We'll continue to update you on golf. Uh, nothing, no scores have really blown anybody away other than the early. Would you, I mean, not, there's not, other than a hole, a hole in one, we'll hear more about that coming up a little bit later on the program, but there's nothing is really kind of, jumped off the page for us or you ha have you did anything really grab you like grab you grab you that has happened I, I think Rory 65 right that grabs me because I mean he's talented enough that uh, I mean to me it, it, it does make you wonder is this and Shuffle is so so talented uh, but it, it does make you wonder if this is headed to a little bit of a runaway for Rory because I mean again he's very comfortable here he's won here and, uh, and he wasn't that far off. I mean, he was driving the ball incredibly well coming in, just had to work out really the, uh, his irons. Uh, and so it, one interesting fun fact about the players Ooh, fun coming in was that the guys that had gone early late had won 15 of the last 17. Uh, well, that's where he is. Uh, he's in that obviously early today, late tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it does – it does make me wonder if uh, Roy McIlroy is going to go something like 65, 68, 66, 69 and, and win this thing. But, again, a lot of talented players chasing him, long way to go. But Rory's first round is, is certainly, I think, yeah. an attention grabber. Yeah, and look, the players, number one, they're all great players. 
The players, though, that are right there, Xander Shoffley is one of the best players in the world. He's tied with him. Nick Taylor certainly has had great moments. Jason Day, Jason Day is a great golfer. Now, he's had a lot of health stuff, and he's not the youngest guy anymore, but he's only two shots back at five under. There, I mean, they, there's – this is there's a lot of golf. To, I think we're going to have some real drama here. I mean, like like legit legit drama here. So I uh, uh, so there's so there's there's a lot of golf. Well, I think Frank, if there's a lot of drama, certainly tomorrow afternoon, once the guys tee off <coughs> around 1:40 tomorrow, uh, that group that that teed off early this morning, that's when I think you're going to really start to yeah. feel what's going on because they'll know what they have to do from the the morning groups tomorrow morning. And so yeah, I think that tomorrow afternoon, if if you don't have to work on a Friday afternoon, get you're out here. Out for here. crying out loud. Why, yeah. why wouldn't you? What's the matter with you if you don't come out here? I mean, some people do You'll have to work. write a note for everybody. Right? <laughs> yes, yes, I'll write a note. note. Just the tell mechanic. Them. Just sign at the I'll mechanic. I'll sign at the mechanic. <laughs> yeah, okay, the word's go. getting around. By the way, yeah. the mechanic is fantastic. <laughs> One of my buddies in the neighborhood said, who I play golf with all the time, he says, it's sticking. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Just say, so just so you know, that it's sticking. That's the, mechan- awesome. the mechanic is sticking. So, so there is. Just don't expect Frank to change the oil. <laughs> no, really <laughs> don't. Fix your carburetor. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even that good at driving it into the oil change place. Much less changing. Thank goodness our friend's a big uh, cheap tire. Is yeah. anything more stressful than when you're going through the car wash place and you've got to line up the wheels? <laughs> No, I, it's no. There's nothing I see, more. I stressful. live in fear. Yes, yeah. That somehow I'm not going to be lined up right, and I I don't even know what my imagination <laughs> believes would happen to the car. But it's like, or what would happen to me in the car? But when they're like guiding me in for like the last five or so, I can't tell you yeah, my, the yeah. stress level spike. I mean, can you imagine how a you'd ruin your car? The world would end. The mass hysteria if you go over that little thing. Because you're right, it's not easy. People think life's easy. Yeah. It's not easy squaring in the, in the tire in that little this thing. This is why I go to a full service type of place. You get out of the car and let it go. Where I get out of the car. Yeah, I, used I to can't be, handle this. I don't do it. I don't, I, used to, I don't do the full. I go, I handle it myself now. That's what I do. I'm that you guy. You wash your own car? Well, I, I drive it. No, I drive <laughs> it through the thing. <laughs> That's what I handle it myself. No, means. no, I mean, I drive. Good you point. got the bucket, you got dri- the suds, you no, got the. No, li- li- like I'm getting the bucket and the suds. <laughs> I mean, is there anybody less bucket and suds than me? The mechanic is me? not washing I mean, his own car. I mean, car. can you picture me out there with the with the sponge? Yeah. Hey, is that Frank out there with Hummy the sponge? maybe yeah. playing in the background. Yeah, right. <laughs> the wax. Fresh yeah. wax. Frank, Frank's got the sponge. Right. Hey, do you see Frank with the bucket and the sponge? No, it's probably not me. So, But I know I drive through the one, and then you go out, and then you vacuum. That's what they do. You, drive, you stay in Look your car, you. and you pop out, and you do the vacuum. Yeah. Because the vacuum always stays on in that one. It's not like the one you put the coins in yeah. and it goes off in seven seconds. This right. one, it's, it stays on there. So, so I have to give a little love to my friends at Hodges Mazda. They come to the radio station. They pick up my car. They wash it. They do the oil change, Goodness. vacuum on the inside, and bring it back to the radio is station. Is Diva one word? <laughs> is it one word? Is it two? It's, right. it's one word, I right? It's one. Diva's one word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make we sure. We just had Aurora. I wonder what yeah. happened. Yes, yeah, we, we did. did. Um, we'll update you on the golf here, once again. Uh, right. you, you're hearing the updates. Gibby's had them for you. He's been out here with us, uh, so you'll hear the updates. So we'll continue along. Again, the news. News that is brewing, Eric Armstead possibly on his way to the Jacksonville Jaguars of real important need. Uh, I thought the two making the two lines more physical in the interior was the most important upgrade for this football team, in addition to some other upgrades we've already seen. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think uh, that's the news of the day. I think that's exciting news. I like where this thing's headed. Uh, look, I'm excited about I've, I've been excited even before all this started. Free agency is not over. The trade possibilities are not over. Uh, they're floating around the whole Brandon Ayuk thing. I have no idea if there's truth to that, but it's fun to, to follow. And and to your point, there's a draft coming up. You know, so there's a lot of good going on uh, possibilities uh, with the with the Jaguars. So uh, my buddy Scott guy says one word, two syllables. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Scott. Scott's always jumping in. We appreciate that uh, very much. We'll take a break. Uh, when we come back, let's reset all of it for you. The golf, the football, where we are. A little college basketball tonight. We haven't even gotten to it uh, yet. Uh, all that. We've been busy out here. It's a Stanley Pools Thursday. Thanks to my friends at Stanley Pools, who, by the way, not only has sold me two pools, not only take care of our pool and service our pool, but we had a little issue with a pipe. Man, Greg sent them right out there. They fixed it immediately. So not only do they service it, not only do they build the best pools in town, but if anything goes wrong that the mechanic can't fix, <laughs> odd as that might be, uh, Stanley Pools gets out there. They got out here immediately and fixed it. We we can't thank them enough. The best pool company in town is always Stanley Pools and always a Stanley Pools Thursday around here. An hour to go. This is 1010XL and 92.5 FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. 
you know Dan Hicken. Man, you put on a show up there at the homecoming last week. <laughs> and you know Jeff Prosser. I don't want to live in your weird past. Mornings on the Drill. Do I make you nervous? On 1010XL. This is Richard Miller with your Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles Update. Our in-store card show returns this Saturday at Showtime, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., with our vendors taking up 20 tables. Football, baseball, and basketball cards at our in-store card show this Saturday, 9 to 4, at Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles. Update your collection. Here's Linda Beaver. Did you hear what's happening? Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet are spring cleaning. New inventory on the ground means we need to make more room. Take advantage of huge savings on thousands of vehicles priced to sell. New and pre-owned prices have been reduced and all sales associates have been instructed to give maximum value on all trades. But you better hurry, the best deals go first. Head to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine. Or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville to take advantage of our spring cleaning sale. We're here to wow you. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion from MyBookie. If you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet the nonstop action of the madness with MyBookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie: you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today only with my bookie. Again, that promo code, 1010XL. Nick in here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Stop paying for exterior paint that does not protect your home or business. Pick it here for my friends at Rhino Shield. Their beautifully durable coatings never chip, crack, or peel, and they back that up with a 25-year warranty. None of that water intrusion damage from these crazy storms we get in Northeast Florida, all while saving you thousands compared to the cost of repainting. And gang, check this out. Right now, 0% financing and up to 20% off new jobs purchased now until Sunday. Go to rhinoshieldjacks.com. Get your free estimate, rhinoshieldjax.com. Mueller Air Conditioning presents... Are you cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice a Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Yo, this is Tony from Tony D's. Are you looking for a great slice of pizza? Well, we have about 12 varieties. Most places won't have slices of pizza after lunch. At Tony D's, you can get a slice all day. It's always fresh at Tony D's Pizza. Bay Meadows and 2 dollars Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. 
From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, The Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. The Players Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist leaderboard update. I'm Andrew Gibson with this tournament update from the Players' Championship. <clears throat> this update brought to you by Atlantic Self Storage and Performance Painting. Xander Shoffley and Roy McElroy are tied for the lead at the Players. Both shot 7 under 65 in round one. Scotty Scheffler 3 under through 10 right now. He is tied for 10th on the leaderboard. Our next update from the Players' Championship in 20 minutes. Atlantic Self Storage, the official storage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Garage getting too full with stuff? Need a place to park your boat or RV? Store it all at Atlantic Self Storage. Tons of locations in Northeast Florida. 24-hour access and month-to-month -month rental agreements. Moving? They can help with supplies. Heading to the players? Look for the storage locker and free bag check at the fan gift shop courtesy of Atlantic Self Storage. Go to AtlanticSelfStorage.com to find the location and move-in special closest to you. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. And here, that means it's time for more football. Football! Hut, hut, hut. Football at 5. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. On the Frangie Show. Frank was right. This is another Christine McVie song where she takes the lead. Obviously, normally it's Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham as the lead singers of Fleetwood Mac, but they kind of mix it up. It's so sad that she's no longer with. It us. really is. It, I mean, it that makes was me incredibly sad. I don't think she got her due. You know what I mean? Like I know exactly. Even, what even when she passed, it was mm -hmm. you know. I mean, she is a rock icon. Totally agree. And uh, it just it just seems like and, and look, they're all fantastic, but uh, it seems like. Uh, Christy McVie just maybe didn't get the appreciation that she deserves. Yes. Well, we are playing some of her songs today, the ones that she's the lead singer on. Today on Old Rock Thursday, always a Stanley Pools. Thursday, Frank Frangie Hayes, Carline. I'm Lauren Brooks, live here at the Players' Championship. RJ Saunders making it all happen back at 10 to Excel headquarters. All right, Frank, when it comes to the Jaguars, I think most people, if you would ask them, they wouldn't have known that this was going to be the question, but... You can have Calvin Ridley or you can have Eric Armstead. Those are your two options. Yeah. I think most Jaguars fans, even though they went through the saga of wanting Ridley, I think they would have said Armstead. My answer to that, my answer to that is Armstead. That sounds like sour grapes, but it honest to God is my answer. And and I and the the backing of that I think, the the, the way I can support that I believe that, is I, like many, have screamed into the mic. The two areas of concern are the interiors of the lines. We've said that since the season ended. I mean, listen, Derek and Derek Henry's very good. Derek Henry is a very good football player. He's second in the league in rushing. I'm a big fan of Derek's. But Derek Henry ran for about seven trillion yards in that last game behind a bad offensive line when everything was on the line. Mm -hmm. That happened. We watched it. I called it. All right, it happened, and you had to get better there. And the Jags couldn't get a couldn't get, make a yard when Trevor tried to jump over because they got they got knocked backwards in the middle of the line. That happened. Those two things are why I thought you had to get a center or guard. They got one, and I think they had to make the interior of their line better. And I rarely think you can do either one of those with rookies. Those are you can go find a rookie receiver. You can go find a rookie cover corner. I don't think you can fix that. When you believe you are have a good enough team that you're in your window, and I think they are, you got to go get veterans that have played in the league. And so, yes, I gave you a long answer to a short question, Lauren. Eric Armstead for me ahead of Calvin Ridley. And Hayes, what Frank didn't mention, Trevor Lawrence, as far as the offensive line, Trevor Lawrence was banged up 
throughout much of the season probably should have taken a few games off when he's played through it, and we all applauded his, lauded his toughness. But at the end of the day, your offensive line couldn't protect your franchise quarterback. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, if it's between Armstead and, and Ridley for me, I'm going to go with Armstead because he's the better route runner. No, <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do think the – Big red zone so, threat because he's so big. There's something about him. There's something about this guy, Carlin, that I don't even know if this stuff's funny, but it always makes me laugh. So either I'm an easy mark or it's funny. I can, and I never can quite figure out which – it's one of yeah, them. Yeah. So, well, so I there. appreciate it. Well, please continue. Um, that, that wasn't funny, but I'm still yeah, laughing. Please good. continue. I thought I appreciate it was funny. It. Okay, good. Um, but it's the 3.6 versus 4.2 that, we, that we've yeah. talked about. I, you have to throw in this league to win. We, we understand that. We're not trying to bring back the wing T here. But you can't be 3.6 <laughs> – Versus 4.2. Correct. And ex- and, and Explain not what that means. Explain what you're, when, you, when you're saying 3.6, 4.2. When the Jaguars ran the ball, they averaged 3.6 yards Correct. a carry. When the opponent ran the ball, the opponent averaged 4.2 a carry. Well, over the course of a 17-game season, that's tough to overcome. Uh, frankly, it's it's impressive they won nine games with the figure being that bad. And obviously, got greatly you know tilted though as the season wore on. And, and the finale in Nashville was a horror show. Uh, you know, and so Armstead will greatly help that, uh, whereas Calvin Ridley wasn't going to help that. And, and, again, I still think the receiving core, it's a fine receiving core as is. I think they will add to it through the draft. But, you know, Christian Kirk is a big-time playmaker. Uh, Zay Jones is very reliable. Gabe Davis, I think, is going to be a really good fit here. I think his best football is ahead of him. Uh, and so – should you add a player? Yeah. I mean, I, second, third round, absolutely. Draft a receiver. And if the right guy's there at 17, and I, I'm fine with that too. But Armstead is going to bring a level of toughness in stopping the run that they absolutely have to have if they're going to be serious about this thing. I mean, again, if you make the tournament this se- season for the second time in three years, which would be a great accomplishment, uh, you don't know that you're going to have a lot of games in Jacksonville. Obviously, you got a lot of resistance in the division now with Houston and maybe Indianapolis. Uh, you may have to go to Arrowhead, where it will be cold, or Baltimore, where it will be cold. And if it's Baltimore with Derrick Henry, uh, Lamar Jackson, you're going to need to be sound against the run. So uh, as the elements become more of a factor – your run defense has to be solid, and, and Armstead will really help that. And really, Frank, there's absolutely no question that if I said Ridley versus Armstead and potentially T. Higgins or Brandon Ayuk with a trade, well, then there was right. there's never going to be a debate. If they can land one of those receivers or potentially, of course, draft a receiver with 17 or 48. I, I, and I'll say it again. If they trade for Brandon Ayuk, and people want T. Higgins, but, yeah, I haven't heard anything there. There are rumors out there that at least there's discussions between the Jags and the 49ers regarding Ayuk. So we have the Armstead deal. Oh, right. Adam Schefter has tweeted a minute ago that it is a three-year, $51 million deal. Okay. So this is no uh, bargain shopping here. This is a, a nice contract. Uh, three years, $51 million for Eric Armstead. So, I, uh, you know, now we'll see. We'll obviously we'll have to see how the contract is structured, but – from a cap standpoint, I would be surprised if they have a lot of maneuverability left, uh, unless they do the Josh Allen extension yep. to create it. And, and um, that's a that's a big boy deal now. And, and yeah. we, we we said this a segment ago, it was going to take some money to sign him. I mean, he he wasn't. Listen, the 49ers like him. He's respected in that locker room. Debo Samuel and others are complaining that they didn't that they cut him. That that, that is. That was not a popular move in San Francisco. The 49ers wanted him to take a pay cut. His cap number was $28 million this year. So someone was going to have to be willing to pay him, and the Jags were. And, again, Hayes, I interrupted you, but, but no, okay. that's not happening if they signed Calvin Ridley. Yes. It's not. There's no, there's no chance they could have done both. There's, that, there's zero chance. And, and so we talked about it yesterday. What, what are you going to now do with that money that you had allocated for Ridley? Uh, well, they're making a big splash. And, again, this needs to be said consistently be thankful that Shad Khan is your owner here because he writes every single check when it comes to player acquisitions that he has ever been asked to any any check that Dave Caldwell ever asked him to write that Trent Baalke has ever asked him to write he has written and you should appreciate that ownership 
that commitment that shot he doesn't always pick the right guy he doesn't you know he puts right. his trust right. in sometimes it doesn't work out that. i mean obviously we know we know what the record is but look at his intention the intention is what it should be he gives his football operation everything that he could give them as an owner to succeed what a great point and this week has been another prime example of that yeah certainly and and i think the Jaguars now feel like a team where Frank's been saying Hayes all along that this is a team that believes they're in their window and he's been optimistic. You and I, I think we're like, we're not quite there yet. They've got, a, and yes, they have a good draft class or they can have a good draft class, but they're, we weren't quite there yet. Now I think you and I, not to speak for you, but now I feel like we're like, okay, this is a much closer team to the Chiefs and the 49ers that played in the Super Bowl a season ago. Uh, I, I think there's two things, Lauren. I think there's, there, there, there's well, there's more than two, but there's there's a number of positions your team can be in, young and rebuilding, okay, um, in between, where you know what you're not young and rebuilding, but you're not there yet, and then there's the it's time to go for it. I thought all along the Jags felt like they were there. Whether I'm right or not, whether they're right or not, and whether or not they make the right moves when they're there, we'll find out. You really don't. It's just like recruiting. You really don't know till they play. But there was no doubt in my mind. When that season ended, we were all bummed out. They were bummed out. Fans were bummed out. We were bummed out because they let it get away from them. They lost five out of six games, and we were all bummed out. And people stayed mad at them for a long time. They, they looked back. When I had Doug on and Trent in Indianapolis, one-on-one, looking them eye-to-eye, eye, what I got from both of them is, listen, we're disappointed the way it ended. We're trying to figure out what went wrong. It's not one thing, and we've done a lot of soul-searching and self-scouting to figure out what that is. But we're close. And we believe we're close. And we can't change those last six games. What we can do is take this really good core, this really good coach, this really good quarterback, these really good players that we talked about with Cam Robinson and Christian Kirk and and Evan Ingram and Travis Etienne and Foye Lewican and Tyson Campbell and uh, Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. That's a lot of good players. Let's take this core of really good players and let and now's the time before they get any older, while we still have the cap room, while we have the money, while our quarterback's young, now's the time to go take all that and turn it into something spectacular. And that's what they're trying to do. Now's the time to go try and win the Super Bowl. They're trying to win the Super Bowl. That may sound funny or comical to people. They're trying to win the Super Bowl. I've said that all along. That's where they are. I heard someone someone came on Twitter and said, well, Frank, you probably tell you they're still going to win the Super Bowl. Well, what I will tell you is they believe they're closer than you think they are. And that's what so that's what this is. We'll see if they got it right. We we won't know that till they play, but they believe if there's three phases, if there's three phases a team can be in, young and rebuilding, in between, and ready to go for it, they believe they're in the ready to go for it phase, and that's Hayes why they're doing all this. Yeah, I, I would say this about what they've done this week. You know, they play ten games away from Jacksonville this coming season. So I sort of went into the off season thinking they were probably somewhere between a 7 and 10 and 9 and 8 club. I think what they've done this week has eliminated, I mean, assuming it's a healthy team. What they've done this week to me has eliminated the 7 and 10. I don't think they'll be that. Uh, I think, could they be 8 and 9? Maybe. Uh, but I, I think what they've done this week has enabled them to stay in uh, a winning record. I, I, I would – Again, it's going to be very difficult with seven games in Jacksonville. Uh, but I think in, in looking at it, I think they're a 9-8, and 10-7 and seven kind of club, uh, which, again, in a AFC this deep, is you've got a pretty good team. If you're able to, to go out there, and that's a lot of wins on the road, if you're going to get to 10, uh, you would think. So uh, in, in looking at it, that's that's sort of what this week has meant to me. I still think I still would classify them as I think they're in the mix to be good. Um, I don't know that they will be good, but I think they're certainly in the mix to be one of the better teams in the AFC. And that's what, what it, and that's what I think too. I'm not going to tell you yeah. they're on their way to 12 wins. But I think we'll it's see. I think it's eliminated again, assuming they don't have a bunch of injuries. To me, what this week has done is it's eliminated. The, they'll be below average. I don't think they'll be below. I don't think they'll be seven and ten or worse. I, I think the worst. I think the floor for this team, as it's currently constructed, is like eight and nine, which would be disappointing. I'm not trying to say disappointment has been taken out of the equation, but uh, but I would be surprised if it's any worse yeah. than that. I predicted eleven and six last year. 
if you would have told me, and I'm not trying to make excuses, I'm just being honest with you. If you would have told me Kim Robinson was going to miss eight of the 17 games, Christian Kirk was going to miss the last six games, Trevor Lo- Zay Jones was going to miss half the games, Devon Hamilton was never going to be healthy, and Trevor Lawrence was going to play with an ankle, a shoulder, a knee, and a concussion, I probably would have come off the 11-6. and six. That's what happened. And no matter what you want to think about it, that's what happened. And, and by the way, your defense was not good. Yeah. Well, right. Now, I missed on that. I missed the part that was not good. In the second half of the season, yeah, the, I should say. The, the first half of the season. The, the part of the good. teams that struggled that was not injury-related, I missed on that. I was wrong. But there were some things I was wrong about, like like always. But 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 I but I but that's what I think they are, and that's what I thought. Remember, this is a team that had a 7-1 and one stretch. There aren't a lot of seven and one stretches in NFL seasons. I don't. I don't care who you are. How many teams last year in the NFL had a seven and one stretch? Did the Chiefs have one? Did the 49ers have one? We'd have to the look. The Eagles Ollie. would have had one. The, the Eagles yeah. probably did because they were yeah. ten and one. So the Eagles probably did. But there weren't many. But the Chiefs started off slow. Yeah, but yeah. but there aren't many teams at any yeah, they time. They won the Super Bowl as the right. three seed. Right. Yeah. There, there aren't many teams that over the course of the season, right, from September 10th through the end of the regular season, January 8th. There aren't many teams that from September 10th to January 8th had a 7-1 and one stretch. So at some point, at one point, they were pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. You know, so so we'll see. Oh, by the way, getting uh, back to the players just real yeah. quick before we go to break, here comes Scotty Scheffler. Uh, he is now four under through 11. Yeah. So three back of Rory and Xander, uh, the defending champ, trying to make history as the first repeat champion, yep. putting himself in excellent and, position. And he went in the afternoon first. Yes. So he'll have that morning weather tomorrow. Let's take a break. More in a moment. 10 10 XL 92.5 FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. Your home for Florida Gators basketball is 1010XL. The Gators step into the SEC tournament as the sixth seed against the Bulldogs. Florida, Georgia, tonight at 930 on 1010 AM. Prosser here for Lifetime Enclosures and Lifetime Flooring. With the weather starting to turn for the better, look ahead. Get that backyard ready for spring with a new screened-in enclosure. Maximize the space you have and make it great with lifetime enclosures and lifetime flooring. They truly are best in the business. If you have the space and the idea, give them a call today. Lifetime enclosures and lifetime flooring. Showroom just off Phillips Highway. Tell them Prosser sent you. Proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, it's Matt Hayes. Get ahead of the changing season with Fenwick Home Services by scheduling your AC system tune-up now. Their experts will perform a multi-point cleaning and inspection that will breathe new life into your system and help prevent breakdowns. Whether you need routine maintenance, repairs, or are ready for a system upgrade, Fenwick has you covered with 24-7 availability. Book your visit online at FenwickHomeServices.com forward slash 1010XL. FenwickHomeServices.com slash 1010XL. If you need an insurance agent, I'll recommend the best guy in town, State Farm Agent Craig Dewhurst. Call him at 940-9740. Really good guy, really good agent. Life insurance, homeowners, automotive, you name it, he'll handle it for you. Tell him what you need. He'll assess your whole situation. What kind of coverage do you need? How much coverage? What should your deductible be? What do you make and how does it fit your cost and your rates? You will love dealing with Craig. What a nice guy he is and how he'll help you get the right answers. The best in the business. Craig Dewhurst from State Farm, 940-9740. AgPro has been family owned and operated for over 64 years. Need a new tractor, parts for your used equipment, or reliable service? AgPro has you covered. Visit us today at any of our AgPro locations or go online to agproco.com to get started with your AgPro experience. To get this thing unwrapped here. Duval! Pros, pros, what in the world are you doing working on your Duval? That's right, man. I really identify with Duval. You live in St. John's County, knucklehead. I mean the Duval sub, the Daily's Dash Duval. Turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheeses. Lettuce, tomato, crispy and fresh, you know, like me. I'm sure there's a Daily's Dash sub that sums you up. The boss. Because, of course. Oven roasted beef, monster cheese, roasted mushrooms, caramelized onions. It's the boss of all subs. Only available for me. That's just not true. What do you mean? I walked in the other day, screamed, you know it, and said, a boss for a boss. Well, no matter who you are, there is a Daily's Dash sandwich or sub for you. Go find yours. They may even make you a boss. I'm sure they will, because it is Daily's Dash. Where more is better. And you got that right. Hey, it's Matt Hayes. I had another aha moment last week when walking through the grocery store. 
I stood in the aisle and laughed out loud while looking at what I used to buy. And that's an overlooked but critical benefit of Awaken 180 weight loss. It changes the way you look at food. You embrace the good and avoid the bad because both your mind and body are reshaped using the program Mike Dempsey and I have had so much success with. I lost 40 pounds with Awaken 180 weight loss, and it begins and ends with a program that encourages you to eat. That's right, eat six times a day. Awaken 180 weight loss also gives you a personal coach who helps you through the process and has answers to every possible question because they've succeeded with the program too. They make sure you stay the course and reach your weight loss goals, and here's the key, keep it off for life. Get your initial consultation on the calendar this month and get ready to change your life with a proven plan that more than 20,000 have successfully used. It's fast, it's easy, and it's free support for life. Reserve online at awaken180weightloss.com. Pull up a chair at the table for some Saturday afternoon sports talk with Compton and Company. So you want to talk about this or what? Join Compton and Company noon to two Saturdays for more conversation about the teams you care about most. I have questions, I need answers. On 1010XL. Hey folks, it's Chevy truck season at Nimnik Chevrolet and there's no better time to do what you do best than a Chevy Silverado. Now at Nimnik, you can save up to $10,000 off a new Silverado. Plus, well-qualified buyers can get rates as low as 0.9% financing on all new Silverado 1500 models. That's right, 0.9%. And with the largest inventory on the ground, outstanding cash incentives, and of course, that best price guarantee. Your perfect truck is waiting for you at Nimnik Chevrolet. And it all starts with a Chevy truck. Remember, Nimnik will give you top dollar for your trade as well. You can shop online 24-7 at NimnikChevy.com or visit the dealership, easy to find, right there at the corner of Park Street and Cassett Avenue. You want a great truck? You want a Silverado from Nimnik? That's Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. Chevrolet, together, let's drive. David Lane here again for Southeast Orthopedic Specials. After several surgeries for age-old issues, mainly my back and shoulders, there's no doubt that Southeast Orthopedic Specialist is my sustaining resource for living pain-free. Take it from me, and I'm being really honest here, there's no better orthopedic facility here in Jacksonville. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialist. The Players' Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. I'm Andrew Gibson with this tournament update from the 50th Players' Championship. This update brought to you by Renewal by Anderson. Defending Players' Champion Scotty Scheffler is making his charge up the leaderboard. Scheffler made back-to-back -back birdies at 10 and 11 and just made par at number 12. He is four under par through 12 and is now just three shots back of tournament co-leaders Rory McIlroy and Xander Shoffley. Scheffler is trying to make history as the first ever repeat champion at the Players, and he is off to a terrific start. Our next update from the Players' Championship in 20 minutes. Ten Ten XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call three nine six fifty five fifty five Jacksonville. Time now for the Sky Life Elite Take Flight Moment of the Week. Sky Life Elite, North Florida's premier private air charter. Brilliant second shot for Ryan Fox into the. 16th earlier, and he made eagle. Now has the tee at the Island Green. Come on down the hill. How about a little three? Did he do it? Three one. No way! Ah! Do it, big man. Kiwi magic right there. Come on down the hill is right. 124 yards. The famed Island Green, Ryan Fox conquers it today with a brilliant ace and he did he eagled 16 what a tremendous 10 minutes in his golf career an eagle at 16 an ace at 17 that moved him to three under i uh, i think he faded after that but uh but a brilliant brilliant shot here to kick off the players championship and it was the perfect take flight moment of the week brought to you by our good friends at skylife elite give them a call at 490-9332 North Florida's premier private air charter. That's the way to travel. You've got to travel that way. Forget this commercial flight stuff. 
that Sky Life Elite is how you should be traveling, more affordable than you could imagine. Lauren, can you tell me who the lead singer is here, <laughs> by any chance? Christine McVie. <laughs> okay. I never saw this coming. I would have uh, lost money if, if we had bet on this. Yeah, because Lauren said, she said, I don't think we have another song with Christine McVie. And I thought, yeah, we did. Buckle okay. up, Carol. Okay. You don't always remember the eight you send. Right. You know, but once you said that, You're I said, just such a Stevie Nicks person I love that Stevie Nicks. I would have yeah. expected yeah. – much heavier yeah. on Stevie Nicks. You also love Lindsey Buckingham. Uh, we haven't heard his song. No, and, and you're probably not going to hear that. Okay. Being that there's only one left, <laughs> yeah. you probably can do it. At I this point, you probably left. can do the math at this point. That would be correct, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen, let's get to a little college basketball. And by the way, like you said, congratulations to Ryan Fox. I had just arrived on the golf course when I heard the roar at 17, and I was like, well, somebody did something good. And, uh, uh, yeah, as it turns out, the Australian – Ryan Fox, like I said, congratulations to him. All right, in college basketball, Frank, Florida takes on Georgia tonight. Georgia beat Missouri 64-59 to last night in the first round of the SEC tournament. Obviously, this will be Florida's third time facing Georgia and Mike White. And I wonder if it's just the slightest bit ironic that the night before they square off for the third time, Todd Golden gets his contract extension. Well, Todd Golden's a really good coach, and he is – that Florida has forgive Scott Strickland credit. He went. He knew who he wanted to hire. He found his guy, and he found a really good one. And good for them for extending him. Some special things are going to happen in Gainesville under Todd Golden. He's the perfect guy to have now when the when the portal is so so prominent because he knows coaches and he connects with existing players. And now the word is out that if you're an existing player and you go there, you're going to be good. It's just like at FSU, the word is out in mm-hmm. football. Absolutely. If you go, if you're a portal guy and you go play for Mike Norvell, it's good things are going to happen. Well, the word's out with Todd Golden in basketball too. So he's a really good coach. This isn't going to be easy. It's hard to beat a team three times in a row. It, it, Georgia's not very good. Georgia's Georgia's after this after the next game or two, they're going to host LaSalle in the NIT. That's who they are. But this one's not going to be easy. I think Florida's going to win tonight, but it's hard to beat a team three times in a row. Uh, Florida did not play very well last time out, which is kind of a good thing. But this won't be an easy one tonight at 945. It won't. Before I get into that, forgive me, Ryan Fox is actually three under four of the tournament still. Okay. So yeah. he slipped, then yeah. he, he regained his footing. So he's uh, he's in good position. He's tied for 15th. He is. So uh, uh, forgive me See if me he can do that. it again tomorrow. We'll see if he can do it tomorrow. <laughs> um, the uh, I watched a, a good bit of the Georgia-Missouri game last night because I'm a sick man. You are sick. And, I asked you uh, if you'd be I know, And in. I wasn't planning on I, it. I watched zero like, dribbles. I was going yeah. to fell asleep. I watched both games. Yeah, I, I, you did? Oh, yes. did you? You I stayed watched, up? Yes. I didn't no, watch you did. No, I, I watched did both not. games. I didn't say I watched both games. Yeah. In yeah. yeah. I watched a little bit of the end of Vandy, Arkansas. I okay. thought Vandy might pull that I did, too. I did watch the entire game. That Mannion kid. Was incredible. Mignon. Mignon. Because I, I, mean, I always want to say filet yeah. mignon. Right. Mignon, yeah. He I mean, was it, really, really good. It, it made me feel a little bit better about Florida's Agreed. loss. I felt because I way. thought Vanderbilt played at a pretty high level. Arkansas ultimately won. Uh, and then the Missouri-Georgia game, Missouri was up seven with like five minutes left. And Georgia was able to pull it together. Missouri finishes just a staggering 0-19 in conference play. My goodness. That spells um, new coach, doesn't it? Oh, that's just brutal. Um, but uh, – I think Georgia has an advantage tonight. I I do think, having played the night before, I don't think it affects you from a fatigue standpoint because these kids are so young. I think they can do it on back-to-back nights. It's when you get into day three and day four where I think it's unsustainable. So I think Georgia has an edge. They've got some confidence. They've won a game in this arena. Uh, They're going to be very familiar with the sight lines, all that stuff. So, you know, Georgia, I think, has an intangible uh, factor there. But Florida obviously has the better team. So I, I do expect Florida to be supremely motivated. I think it will be dicey for a while. But I think ultimately uh, Florida wins. I'd probably take Georgia in the points. I think Florida's laying eight and a half. Um, I'd probably take, if I had to bet it, Georgia in, in the eight and a half. Uh, but I think Florida wins somewhere between five and six points, somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, and I think they move on. And I do think they'll beat Alabama. Uh, Friday, kind of for the same reason why I think Georgia is going to play this one close. I just think when you've won a game in the tournament, you have a little bit of an edge over a team that's had a little bit of a layoff. So, uh, but we'll we'll worry about that game tomorrow. I I think Blue Kane was outstanding yep. last night for Georgia, the freshman three point shooter. Where did he, he come from? Uh, IMG. Okay. Yeah, uh, and so uh, you know, it's uh, Florida obviously is going to have to be mindful of him. It's amazing to me. That the Melendez kid that looked like, right. you know, he was the greatest player on the planet in the Gainesville right. meeting, the game that Florida won in overtime, 
Uh, he's been such a non-factor, and he barely played last night. Yeah, he's a transfer from Illinois that uh, that could never crack the starting lineup at a really good Illinois team. I didn't know that. Yeah, I just saw, and I didn't follow very close. I just saw him go nuts in Gainesville and thought he was a really good player. The, the truth is, he's a he's a swingman version of Omar Payne. When right, he looks like an NBA guy, but not right very often. Yeah, and I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, I didn't either. And so I, you know, but it, in terms of, I would assume Todd Golden's game plan for tonight will be. Uh, you know, make sure Blue Kane doesn't get a lot of uh, open looks. Yeah. And, again, I just think that uh, the story with Mike White, it's always the same. If you can score over 70, you're going to beat him. If, if you get in a slugfest, then you allow his team a chance to, to knock you off. But uh, they're so unsophisticated offensively uh, that I'd be surprised. I mean, Golden versus Mike White. Let's just – I mean, it, it's its a coaching mismatch. I mean, it, they have upgraded at coach. It's such an extreme level, getting Todd Golden. And uh, and it was smart to, to get the extension done today. I mean, he's now signed through 29-30. Uh, that's remarkable. I still think Florida is going to have to fight off a lot of really, do really big-time programs. Well, especially if he does uh, it again. Yeah. If he – if he if listen, it's – again, when, you're, when, when you live with the portal, you're going to have to retool every year. Even if Clayton stays, which I don't think he will, I think this is his moment. Um, but and, and you know Samuel and Poland are gone. So you're going to have to retool your wings in your backcourt again. Um, but if he does it again, then they're all coming. They're, then they're all – you can always say he fell into something good one year. You do it again, then you're on to something good. For sure. Yeah, By yeah, the way, yeah. uh, South Carolina beat Arkansas. So South Carolina moves on and also Mississippi State beat LSU. Those wow. are the two games that have already happened, and then tonight. That's a big seven, one for Mississippi State. It certainly yeah. is. Because yeah. they were right on, on that the bubble. bubble. Yep. A&M is the next one. Yep, and so Ole Miss takes on A&M tonight, 7 o'clock. And so that's obviously the game if you're a Gators fan. That's the, what leads into Florida playing Georgia. But Ole Miss being a 10 seed in the SEC tournament, Texas A&M being a 7 seed. When Florida lost to Ole Miss, yeah. Yeah. I, and obviously barely lost to Texas A&M too, but got rolled by Ole Miss, I would never have expected. Yeah, we, they looked like they were good. Turned out it, it fell yeah. apart. They, I did. looked at this last night because I was shocked. Ole Miss was two and eight in their final ten league games. Yeah, yeah. They so just, they, they went just from being apart. like the story, of the, and they still gave him an extension, which is right. smart. He's a good right. coach, and he right. yeah. he's done a good job, Chris Beard. But uh, but yeah, two and eight down the stretch. So they've they're not even on the bubble. I mean, their nets like in right. the nineties. They've gone from darling to I mean, they'll they'll absolutely be an NIT club. We'll take a break. Uh, almost out of time. One segment to go. When we come back, Lauren's got news and notes to wrap an eventful Thursday on Ten Ten XL and ninety two point five FM. The Frangie Show, live from the Hastings Injury Law Firm Studios on 1010XL. Hit back with Hastings. This is Brett Musburger's Action Update, brought to you by Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing Septic and Air Conditioning, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, here are the latest lines from My Guys in the Desert. Which conference will be cutting down the nets in Phoenix for the men's national championship basketball game? The Big East is the betting favorite. They have UConn, Marquette, Creighton at plus 300, while the Big 12 with the number one team in the nation, the Houston Cougars, are at plus 350. The SEC has some contenders, including Auburn, Tennessee, Alabama. They are plus 410. The Big 10, led by Purdue, is at plus 480. The ACC, plus 850 to be the conference of champions. They have teams like North Carolina and Duke, and the the Pac-12 is at plus 1,000. This update brought to you by Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing, Septic and Air Conditioning, a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm Tony Desiri with your VEASAN Action Update on 1010 XL. Hey there, Jacksonville. With scorching temperatures just around the corner, it's crucial to ensure your AC is blowing nice and cool. Duck Duck Air Conditioning is here to keep you comfortable all summer long. But don't wait until the heat gets here. Our service techs are ready right now to handle any cooling issues you may have at your home or business. Call Duck Duck AC today at 904-862-6769 to schedule. That's 904-862-6769. Duck Duck Air Conditioning, online at duckduckac.com. At Hodges Mazda, we are proud of our solid reputation in the Jacksonville community. Lauren Brooks here. As your hometown Mazda dealer, our high customer service standards and our huge inventory of new and used cars provide our customers a consistently first-rate car buying experience. Our professional non-commissioned sales team puts your best interest first without exception. And every vehicle purchased from Hodges Mazda comes with two years free maintenance. 
Visit Hodges Mazda today or shop online at HodgesMazda.com and discover the Hodges Mazda difference. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. Do you have clicking, popping, swelling, or pain in your knee or shoulder? This can be due to arthritic changes in your joints. Over time, you have wear and tear of your cartilage. I am Dr. George Bari, and here at Bari Orthopedics, we have numerous ways to treat your arthritis, such as regenerative medicine, including PRP and joint replacements with CT guidance for accuracy down to the millimeter. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, call us for an appointment today or log on to bariorthopedics.com. Find out more at bariorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. Pull up a chair at the table for some Saturday afternoon sports talk with Compton and Company. So you want to talk about this or what? Join Compton and Company noon to two Saturdays for more conversation about the teams you care about most. I have questions. I need answers. On 1010XL. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection. And sauced and tossed in those 11 soul-satisfying flavors. Paired with hand-cut seasoned fries, house-made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And, of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. Patriot Roofing Services, specializing in all types of commercial and residential roofing and repairs, gutters, sun tubes, skylights as well, 10-year workmanship warranty, financing available, military and senior citizen discounts, no subcontractors. Mention this ad at the time of the estimate and receive $500 off any new re-roof. Call Mark today, 982-4052, 982-4052, licensed and insured. Florida and Florida State Baseball face off at 1-1 to -one Financial Ballpark Tuesday, March 26th for the Fresh from Florida Sunshine Showdown. The annual Florida State versus Florida Baseball game is a can't-miss event hosted by Gator Bowl Sports. Tickets on sale now. Act soon. This event sells out quickly. Florida State versus Florida Baseball, Tuesday, March 26th at 6 o'clock. Get tickets at TaxSlayerGatorBowl.com, and we'll see you at the ballpark. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion from my bookie. If you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet the nonstop action of the madness with my bookie. My bookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the my bookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie: you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today only with my book. Ahead, we build platforms for digital business. We help create your platform for digital business by weaving together advances in cloud infrastructure, intelligent operations, and modern applications. Digital business is comprised of five pillars. We call them imperatives because they're a must have, not a nice to have. We enterprise cloud, integrated security, scaled DevOps, intelligent operations, and relentless automation. Need help with digital transformation? Ahead, learn, grow, achieve. The Players' Championship. Now, here's a 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Leaderboard Update. <laughs> I'm Andrew Gibson with this tournament update from the 50th Players' Championship. This update brought to you by Universal Roof and Contracting. Rory McElroy and Xander Shoffley are tied for the lead here at the Players. Both are in the clubhouse after shooting 7 under 65 earlier today. Rory tied the Players' record with 10 birdies in his first round. Meanwhile, Shoffley had his first career bogey-free score in 15 rounds here at the Players. 
And what a day for Ryan Fox from New Zealand. Fox today became the first player in Players' Championship history to score an eagle at 16, followed by an ace at 17. And look out now, Scotty Scheffler, the defending champion, is making his charge up the leaderboard. After a bogey on the first hole, Scheffler has reeled off five birdies. In round one, he is four under through 13 and remains three shots back of the lead. Our next update from the players in 20 minutes. Ten Ten XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call three nine six fifty five fifty five Jacksonville. What's going on in the world? It's time for Frangie Show news and notes. Here's Lauren Brooks. To my love, took it down. Climbed a mountain and I turned around And I saw my reflection in snow-covered hills Till the landslide brought me down Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child within my heart What's the limit that we're supposed to play songs? Because uh, t- uh, ten minutes. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. God, what a beautiful song. Mm. This, of course, would be Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac today, all day on Old Rock Thursday. This is just one of those songs that you just gotta stop when you hear it, listen to the whole thing. But, of course, we have to continue talking sports. Uh, by the way, I texted my dad. I wasn't exactly sure who his favorite golfer was. He's Arnold Palmer, but for you, your dad, Frank, and your dad, Hayes, Jack, Jack Nicholas, Nicholas, he was yeah. out here today. It was yeah, great. Yeah, my, Hayes' dad is a big, big, big Nicholas fan. My dad was a Unitas fan first, Nicholas second, Sandy Koufax third, and they all loved Jim Brown, Hayes. You know, back in the day, you didn't see the, the sports we all see now. Right. You know, our fathers saw far less sports than we saw. You know, so, um, but yeah, seeing Jack Nicholas here was, 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 was amazing. Was was amazing, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was really amazing stuff. And it was humble, gentlemanly, respectful all around. It was a, a, an amazing moment at 140. Scheffler, Ricky Fowler, who was with them? Oh, uh, JT, J- yeah, J- J- Justin, Justin Thomas. Justin Thomas. Because we heard a roll yeah, tide and we heard yeah. a war eagle. And all, all of them together, it was a, it's a special moment. It's, it's one more thing that the players did magnificently. It was an honor to uh, see Nicholas today, and um, you know, and, and to see him be able to soak up the appreciation of uh, what I thought was just a fantastic gallery. Um, you know, the fans certainly there were fans that followed uh, Scheffler, Thomas, and, and Fowler to their approach shots, but there was a good contingent that stayed back and and watched you know Jack Nicholas do an interview with Roger Maltby and and then go pose with the new trophy and and find where. You know his name is is on that three times, and uh, to hear the fans thank him and uh, just the appreciation that they showed, uh, I it, it was uh, it was magical. It was incredibly well thought out by the players and incredibly well executed. That's hard to do. It's hard to pay homage, but it's like you don't want to do things that like we see like we Augusta does Jack and you know for well, forever it was Jack Arnie and Gary. Uh, with the opening tee shot, the ceremonial tee shot. So how do you find something that's unique, that's not going to rub anybody the wrong way? And uh, I thought they did a, a brilliant job of making it 140 in the afternoon with uh, probably the best group of players uh, that, that the, the, the event has, certainly the defending champion and two other former players' champions. So uh, magnificently well done, and it was just so, so – Amazing and, and humbling to to get. Uh, there aren't too many you know living legends left. You That's know? right. I mean, he, he well to said. me he is he is an absolute icon, and I know so many people feel the same way. He's just such a, a spectacular ambassador, not just for golf, but for sports and for America. I, I felt the same way. I, while we were watching it. I, I it was weirdly emotional watching it. it really was. Yeah, for it many was, reasons. It was surreal, and and I think the players reacted really well, and. 
Jack Nicholas seemed to enjoy it, and it wasn't over the top. I think that was the other thing, right? Uh, so it was really, really good. All right, one thing that, Hayes, we were talking about in the break, the Texans are giving Joe Mixon, the running back, a three-year deal worth $27 million, $13 million guaranteed. How would you feel about that if you're a Texans fan? I, I think it's burning money. I mean, it, it, it's to me, it's a ridiculous contract. I mean, you just traded a seventh-round pick for the guy. Why would you need to give him an extension? He's uh, 27 this year, so obviously, obviously Cincinnati thinks he's pretty much done. But uh, you know, but obviously there's not going to be much left there. Houston has a bunch of money, so their argument would probably be, well, we've got a bunch of money, so you know. But to me, it's a bad investment. I mean, I, I don't know why they felt compelled to do a lucrative extension with Joe Mixon. I mean, to me, that's silly. So I mean, I'm I'm glad they did it because I think it's a bad move. Uh, but I am really surprised that uh, that they are not just entering a short term, but you know, a, a fairly substantial long term. Certainly, long term for a 27 year old running back yeah. that's got a lot of miles on the tires. I agree with you, Hayes. They bucked the they bucked they bucked the trend. It's a copycat league where people rarely buck a trend. People aren't extending and paying running backs, and so um, and now you're extending and paying a running back that's that's never worn your uniform. So uh, so it's we'll see. Interesting. I agree with you. All right, so another interesting, I would say, trade. The commander sending last year's starter Sam Howell to the Seahawks. In a pick swap, the Seahawks receive Howell in a fourth-round pick. The commanders receive a third and a fifth. I guess, obviously, the commanders are pushing all their chips in for their rookie quarterback, but it's still surprising to me that they would let Sam Howell go. Odd to me on both sides. Uh, you would think that uh, the commanders didn't draft Sam Howell so high that you'd have the first-round versus first-round controversy. You know, so I thought he'd be a good guy to, to play some there. Obviously, that's not the way they feel. And Seattle doesn't do the deal unless they think he might be the guy. And that surprises me. So I'm surprised from both teams, Hayes, for me. It's interesting. On Seattle's part, I like it because you don't – Geno Smith, I still, you know, I mean, he, he deserves a lot of credit for having this brilliant second act of his career. Uh, although last season it, it got a little sideways for him. But I – I like bringing Sam Howell in in case Geno Smith does uh, regress further, uh, and he's just getting older. So I, I, I don't mind it from Seattle's perspective. Uh, you know, Washington, I think it's just now we're entering a, an age where if you're moving off of a quarterback, you've got to just get him out of the room. And it's what makes the field thing so really fascinating in Chicago because I don't think they want to just settle for a pick you know, uh, you know, something in the in the mid to late rounds. Uh, so we'll see about Caleb Williams, who was out here today. Hopefully he had a good time uh, enjoying the players. How could you not? I know. It's a good, very good point. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it does make me wonder. We saw Atlanta today trade Desmond Ritter for, I'm assuming, a washing machine to somewhere. <laughs> um, and so uh, – A good it, washing it, machine. Yeah, it's, it's almost like now that, you know, if, if you had a starter last year – who you weren't happy with. Now they can't just be in the room. It's like, nope, they've got to be completely out of the market, out of the locker room to avoid any sort of, uh, you know, divide schism there when the, when the new guy comes in. As ridiculous as it would be, if Kirk Cousins walks into the room, you would think everybody would be behind him and not worrying about Desmond Ritter. Washington's a little more complicated because Hal did some good things. So, you know, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Sam Howell, but, uh, but I, I do like the move for Seattle. And one other NFL note, and I want to get it to college football quickly before we turn it over to Rick Blue, and we can certainly talk more of this college football tomorrow. Joe Flacco is heading to the Colts on yeah. a one-year deal. So that was interesting. That one is very because, interesting. And I'll tell you why. Gardner Minshew to the Raiders. Right, and that's what they did. They, they went and got – that tells me – Joe Flacco's got something left. Uh, even Not a lot left, but, I mean, he could go win a few games for you. Look, the, Anthony Richardson, and, he, and, he, and he's a pupil of our friend Denny Thompson, and he's a wonderful kid, and he played for the Gators. But he's got to prove he can stay on the field. I don't think anybody would debate that. The Colts think they're pretty good, and they went and got a guy not unlike Minshew, obviously a whole different career and older and, and differently accomplished, that can go win four games for you if Richardson gets hurt again. This tells me they're not sure Richardson's not getting hurt again. That's what the move tells me. You couldn't have a more polar opposite starter backup situation yeah, right. than really what out. Anthony yeah. Richardson brings to the huddle <laughs> and what Joe Flacco brings to the huddle. I didn't even think about now, that. Now, I will say this. I think it 
it speaks, and Chris Ballard talked about this at the Combine, I think Indianapolis has a good coach in Shane Steichen. And Ballard really commended Steichen on being able to take a specific group of problems and find solutions for those problems. And the fact that they could have AR as the starter and Flacco as the backup tells me they have a lot of confidence that Steichen doesn't have to have the same kind of quarterback to make the offense work, that, that he can adjust at such a high level that he can develop a plan to win with Anthony Richardson. But if something happens, he can develop a plan to win with Joe Flacco. Well, obviously, those are going to be radically different plans. So it speaks to Indianapolis's confidence in their young head coach that, uh, that he can get the job done with two guys that couldn't be more polar opposite in terms of how they play the position. Yeah, I agree with that. And then college football, like I said, we can get to this more tomorrow. The college football playoff is one step closer to the 14-team playoff that would begin in 2026 as the 10 FBS conferences and Notre Dame are expected to sign the agreement around midday tomorrow, according to ESPN. Yeah, the question then becomes, what do they do with the AQs? Do they have – I still think you're going to – where they're ultimately going to land is five AQs and – Automatic qualifiers. And nine and – nine, five automatic qualifiers and nine at large. I don't know matter how many they talk. I think that's where they're going to land. I'd be very surprised if that's not where they land. So yes. we'll see. We shall see is right. And uh, certainly more golf for us to watch uh, for the rest of today and tomorrow. Where is Scheffler at this point on the golf course? Is he uh, I think he's right down, coming down the stretch. I think he's probably on four. Where is he? 14? He's 14. On four. Yeah, that's okay, perfect. So, yeah, this really is perfect. So uh, if you can't get out to the players uh, early in the day because you do have work, hey, you know what? Come after work. It's 10 till 6 right now, and if you got here after work, you could see Scheffler I mean, take on 15, 16, 17, and 18. perfect is that? Yeah, because of the time change, it is absolutely perfect. All right, let's say hello to Rick Ballou. Now, the two-minute drill brought to you by Tire Outlet. Tire Outlet is now hiring. Visit tireoutlet.com slash careers, equal opportunity employer. I feel bad for my buddy Baloo. He's devastated today. The news came down that <laughs> Florida State lost by just a hair today yeah. to North Carolina. Oh, well, I didn't even see the score. And, uh, like, 90 like, to 76, I think. Yeah, and then, they uh, were up 2 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Then it was five two, and then it was five, and it was five five, and I was thinking, man, <laughs> yep. so yeah. close. So the Knowles so won't be in the tournament. Hey, uh, Eric Armstead, I think that's a big get. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I mean, wow. I want to see the guaranteed money, but you know, they had no pass rush from the interior. They only had three sacks all year Correct. inside. You know, I mean, Allen and. Walker was as good as you'll find in the NFL, but the backups at, at the edge gave him three, and the interior gave him three. So, you know, this is a man who's very good against the run. He can move around a little bit. He's played some, uh, some end uh, before at, um, in San Francisco. And, of course, Trent Bulky went out and got him in, uh, in 2015. So, yeah, I, I really liked the move. I, I liked what I heard yesterday with, uh, with Mitch Morse. Uh, sounds like these two are going to bring – some leadership uh, to this locker room, some credibility to this locker room. There's a part of me that almost wants to overdo the Armstead signing and say, all right, this is going to be Calais Campbell part two five years later. But, you know, it it is mid-March. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But if he can stay healthy, and that's the big if. He missed five games last year. You know, this guy's been injured. You know, he's been injury prone. So that's always a concern. But I – Love the news today. These are moves, Rick, and I'm serious about this. I told, I've been saying this for a while now. These are moves you make when you think you're really close. Yeah. You, when you think you're uh-huh. – whether they're right or not, we'll see, but they think they're really close, bro. You don't, you don't pay this kind of money to a 30-year-old defensive tackle unless you think you're really close. What is money? I and mean, what yeah. is the salary cap? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, know. I mean, I, I, I have to believe in order to make this move – we're going to hear that they restructured a low Con or yeah. Kirk. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. They, you have to decide when you're when you're batting money into the future. Yep. And it's, it could be a danger pres- dangerous precedent. Mm-hmm. But there's a time to do it. Yeah. And I think they think that's what it is now. So, all right, what do you got that tonight? I bet. Y'all absolutely got that tonight. And then everything that's gone out here today. What a just an incredible uh, morning and afternoon. But really impeccable scoring conditions. And I, you know, the two sixty fives early. I thought, all right, these these early tee times on a Thursday. The, uh, these afternoon guys are really going to be chasing. But all of a sudden, you look at what's going on now as we speak. The wind hasn't picked up. The conditions remain very impressive. And, you know, we're seeing some guys go low here on the back nine, whether it's on their front side or back side. So I'm excited to be on air here to keep people updated. And yep. 
Um, you know, 17 under won it a year ago. Uh, is that uh, in jeopardy again this year? It does feel like it's a little bit too easy out here. <laughs> And that bothers me somewhat. I know you and I have talked about this over the years. I like watching the best players on the planet struggle in certain events. And they're just going – I mean, we've had 21 Eagles out here yeah. today. Yeah. You, 21 you, Eagles. Your, your perfect world, seriously, would be five or six underwear. The year David Duvall won yeah. in 1999 was my, yeah. was my most favorite yeah. players' we, championship. We, and it was a grind. Yep. And it was an absolute grind. That's the way I've always loved it. And, and, and I just, there's certain events where I really want to see the best guys struggle, where par is a good score, and birdie is magnificent. That's not the case out here tonight. Rick Beluga is into the night right now. Thank you, Rick. All right. All right. That'll do it for our program. One more day out here for us tomorrow. We'll be uh, live from here uh, at the Players' Championship. Boy, it's going to be a good day tomorrow. It'll be fun to see uh, Scotty Scheffler and company going off in the morning. Uh, All that coming up tomorrow. Folks, we're out here. Don't go anywhere, though. Rick goes into the night right now. For Hayes Carline, Lauren Brooks, and R.J. Saunders, I'm Frank Frangie. So long.